Now, he's I mean, also um, he, he's in an incredibly um, funny film, you know, from the towards the end of the 90s when everybody was making end of the world movies because 1999 uh, turn of century was coming up. He's in an in- end of days. Yeah. A, a wonderfully bad, funny movie in which he's a he's a he's a cop who's oh, up against the devil that played yeah, by Gabriel Byrne. Gabriel Byrne. Gabriel Byrne. That was beautiful <laughs> segue there, Jack, I have to say. I know, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Kneel and worship King Segway. <laughs> <laughs> end of days I, re- I remember that for one line and that's when Arnie is, sh- is, is doing his shtick is, you, you, he says something along you're a fucking choir boy compared to me a choir boy <laughs> and he's saying it to the devil <laughs> oh. it's so camp it's so ridiculous uh, yeah that's a bad film but funny oh, fun. really funny not intentionally so it thinks it's being serious <laughs> yeah yeah, you know, it thinks it's doing like a sort of a, a, a sort of melange of action and horror. You know, uh, it was sort of like The Omen meets Die Hard, and it's really, really bad. <laughs> the Omen meets Die Hard. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but there you've got Gabriel Byrne doing what Gabriel Byrne normally does. That is being like a quite a big presence on screen, mm. sort of dominating. You kind of need somebody like that against Arnie, don't you? What I love about him in Hereditary is just how subdued he is. He's hard you know, you, there. He's you hardly cast somebody there. It's yeah. very interesting to have it's someone so of his brilliant. name that he's it's hardly so there. I, I love the fact that it's both in it's both in the direction of the film, in the script, and in his performance. Mm. There's kind of a diffidence. It's almost like it's it deliberately sidelines him to make mm. a point. Mm. I think mm. you need someone who who's capable of charisma mm-hmm. and who's not using it. Yes. For that yes. Role. Yeah. yeah, and what is interesting is that point. both he and Colette were Tony Colette were on board very early, weren't they? I mean, they mm-hmm. were they they became involved in not only acting in the movie, but they were they were involved in its sort of uh, its production in some way. You know, sort of getting it out there, and you know, they were they were sort of minor creative forces in you know. In Astor's vision, I believe you know mm-hmm. they weren't just oh. cast to be in the movie as actors. I can sort of see you, why it is that kind of script, isn't it? It's that kind of project. You would need that degree of emotional investment in this to make it work. Plus, of course, and it's, it's a, the it's sort a, of thing actors do get passionate about as well. Yeah, and, it, and, and they are. It, you can tell in interviews and things that they're passionate about it. Yeah, and, and it, of course, it's a debut it, film, and itself. you know, the, the, he he would have needed the val the added value of uh, people who've got a certain profile, and to <laughs> to, to to tempt them in to be um, have more than just uh, you know being more than just acting mode. Um, it's it's oh. quite interesting because this is the sophomore Ari Aster movie, isn't it? I mean, like the, this is the first, isn't it? I can't get over that. That I I, I find amazing because directorially this film is incredible <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> and what is it like something ridiculous like 33 or something oh. <laughs> That's annoying. it does have a touch of um first novel syndrome about it which is that there's there's an awful lot thrown in oh, and he's doing an awful lot of yeah, uh, it, yeah, but then that does not inherit. I mean, Citizen Kane is like that. Yeah, Orson yeah, yeah. comes in and he, just, I just, I want to do everything. I want to do everything all at once. And, and it just as well for Orson, some... he did because he was never allowed to do that again. Not certainly not with the studio <laughs> yeah. system. Um, with, the, with the studio money, yeah, yeah. Ariasta was um, was luckier than that, of course, but mm, um, definitely. In fact, it's very interesting how a film like this would have been made in the context of, of, of the time it was made, because of course, it, it comes along and it really should be more of a kind of pure indie film but it's it's at that point of course where the indie film is uh well, was dissolving fast because yeah. you, you know the, the well for, for a number of reasons but you know um uh the 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 will to uh get to to sort of um see a return on a project from say for example dvd sales it just isn't there anymore so therefore the indie film, the American indie film, is almost gone. There's a few little exceptions, but even then, yeah. they're, they're, they're indie well, films by very, very well-known directors, like something like Patterson, for instance, which is uh-huh. an indie film, but it's made by a really, really, really famous director. <laughs> unless, you, unless you're talking about the, the real modern-day in indie or underground cinema, which is, you know, the, I mean, loads of it is horror, mm-hmm. um, and it's incredibly that, yeah, cheap. True. 
that's true. Yeah, and but it's, it's but it, it, it most, looks, the vast majority so of it is this. absolutely atrociously bad. But it's mm-hmm. there's a, there's a lot of it being made incredibly, yeah. you know, bargain basement micro budget horror, mm. and I suppose that is the indie horror of our time. Mm. Yes, it is. It's it's the sort of analog horror craze. It's the YouTube stuff, isn't it? It's the projects that people are literally making at home on their phones or on their computers. That's the indie horror of the time. Well, and the stuff that they can scrape together enough of the budget that they can hire like a guy that was in the bill to be in it, and <laughs> you know, and they'll they'll get it packaged up for relatively small amounts of money, and it'll get it'll, it'll find its way onto the shelf in Tesco's, you know, stuff like yeah. that with um with five star reviews. This is the scariest thing I've ever seen from some um online hor- horror zine that you've never heard of. Stuff like that. Yeah. Everybody's been tricked into buying one of those from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Guilty, mate. Probably more than one or two. <laughs> Though I find this quite peculiar uh, uh, that uh, this this film is classified as a fifteen. <laughs> again, it's like it's the Blair Witch Project syndrome. It's the Blair isn't it? Witch I mean, Project like, all over again. It's this is I I, feel, I you know, speaking personally in terms of reaction. This is one of the hardest films to watch we've done. I yeah. think. And I remember um, taking about eight or nine months b- run up to this movie when I when uh-huh. I first um, picked it up because every time I was sort of looking forward to putting it on, and I'm always a Johnny Come Lately. I mean, we uh-huh. know this; it's been a sort of running gag. Right? Um, uh-huh. But um, I would have people, oh, 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 mm-hmm. you watch That's it. it, and I said, well, what, oh, it's really grueling. And when I, but but I think it what helped me a lot yes it is grueling but it is a different kind of grueling see once yeah. when people use the, the word grueling to me i sort of think oh what are we talking here saulo or something because you know i or, or um, irreversible because i don't want to watch those uh-huh. um and uh, so for a while i thought oh am i am i gearing up to watch something like that it is a different order of grueling um yeah. but when you sit down to watch it the first thing it's like oh 15 right? who was who was sat in the bbfc chair that week and how much did he <laughs> have to drink <laughs> or was it just like ah oh, it's a documentary about my own family so therefore <laughs> John being entirely arbitrary you know at half the time the bbfc standards and parameters i think a lot of the time they're just they are it's primarily visual isn't it it's it's like visual violence yeah. that they're going after it's it's well, sexuality you know there's you know there's yeah. some gross out moments exactly. in this you know I mean, and a hell are. of a lot of it is, is still about sex. It, yeah, certainly yeah, in Britain, it is. Yes, the awful that's amount it. of it is sex. Yeah, yes. when we all know, the old, you know, it's the it's the old sort of Clive Barker Hellraiser thing. Oh, we were allowed three consecutive buttock thrusts, but a fourth was considered obscene. Yeah, yeah. Are there any? Uh, does anybody swear in this? I think there might yes. be. I yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think somebody there's says a fuck. Moments. Yeah, yeah. There's the dinner sequence, but, the infamous dinner sequence, which I think yes. is the hardest bit in the film. Whoa, that watch. scene. Whoa, that um, scene. Where she says, yeah. she, it's actually framed as a very gallows joke, but it's also making a point. She says, don't you fucking swear at me, I'm your, or, or don't swear at me, I'm your fucking mother, or something yeah. like that. And it's. It, it's simultaneously a joke, but it's also demonstrating the kind of hypocrisy of her position, you know. Well, exactly. Um, there it is in a nutshell. Don't abuse me. That's unfair. Yes, I'm the one that gets to abuse job, you. Right? I'm yeah. the parent. I get to abuse you. You yeah. don't get to abuse me. Yeah, even though I've taught you to do it. Even though I've taught you to do it. Yeah, and we know this. We know this through revelations that come throughout the narrative, right? You, you get those moments where she's confessing to various people oh you know I, I used to sleepwalk and i did this to him which was awful when i when he was a child by the sounds of things because he was still sharing a room with his sister at that point so a very young child also what i love about that particular confession where she's talking about sleepwalking and dousing him in paint thinner and then waking up with the, the matches in her hand you don't know that's true there's something about the way exactly. she says, you know, there's something about the way she says that, the way she's telling that story where it sounds like she's a justifying herself. She's apologizing for herself and she's trying to weave it into her, her own narrative of what motherhood is. And then you get that compared and contrasted to things that she says later, one of which is technically in a dream sequence. But when she says to him, I never wanted you and you get that that really difficult exchange where she talks about trying, actively trying to abort him. And it's like, oh my God, what? 
That does yeah. what is I, this? that does take place in a dream, but I, I I interpret that as a shared dream. I think they're having yeah. the sh- the same dream. I think so at the same time. I think so too. Well, one yeah. of the things that really did occur to me on the second viewing, because I've now seen it twice, is obviously subjectivity and objectivity is a is a big. Um, well, it's a theme of the of the of the, of the piece. Well, it's one of the richest veins in the film. But it, mm-hmm. it's not just you know. For you get that wonderful moment. You know Annie's neutral view of the accident, uh, the, the mm-hmm. dollhouse motif itself, all the way through. Yes. But I was convinced yeah. on this viewing that Annie is perhaps not seeing everything unfold as we are, and it's possible that that cold, clinical, muted color palette version we get is not the objective one. And 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 I'm wondering how many times I was sort of trying to plot it through my head in my head as we were watching it of which scene she is seeing effectively what we are. And then there are scenes where she's accessing things probably sub, on a more subconscious level or impressions that we don't fully get until the movie ends. There's, there's little clues threaded throughout that are striking on a second viewing but i mean you mentioned the dinner scene there george and there were times during the dinner scene because of the way um astor had framed certain shots um and because of the way the dialogue had 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 sort of been a callback to earlier scenes that it was is she seeing peter as we're seeing him or is she seeing peter grinning at her as he grins at himself in the reflection or as payman Mm. grins at him at at him in the reflection in the classroom because there were just little moments at that where i i I was at sea and this is not a criticism of the of what the film is doing but i was just like hang on she's being a controlling abusive all about me parent but there's a couple of lines here and there's a couple of shots and uh, is she? What's the expression on his face as far as she sees? Is yeah, it we're getting? Is, and the film is threaded with those moments, isn't it? There is a line from Peter. I think it's in the shared dream where he where he asks her why are you why are you afraid of me? Mm. Yes, yes. Why are you afraid of why me? Are you right. afraid of me? And that difficulty with perspective is implicit in the text, isn't it? I mean, it, you get that Very wonderful Rosetta difficult. Stone of an opening sequence, which for me that's the key. That's the key to the entire film. That opening shot where you get the camera panning into the doll's house and it doesn't cut it doesn't like cut away or anything you you pan into the doll's house and peter's waking up in well, the bedroom this, of the doll's this, house. this is a film about a, a, a cult manipulating a family as if they were in a doll's house as and if, a filmmaker the, zooming in on a doll's yes. house which is also his this set is it. and the this main character right. with a doll's house who no, tries to manipulate and control her family yes. objective has three layers of it you literally <laughs> She's have remade. characters with their heads popping off like dolls do throughout the like film. dolls yeah being manipulated yeah. like it like it's an abused child like an abused child is trying to work out it's trauma by playing with toys that's what it feels like um, which is exactly what charlie does does. this is definitely a hall of mirrors this film yeah you know and you have the 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 tree house which is kind of a doll's house as well it's like a Mm. smaller model house that they that they jump in and out of um you have you have literally you have houses within houses just like the Mm -hmm. the overlook hotel in the shining contains a model of the overlook hotel and the and the the hedge maze and you get the the shot of uh, Jack Torrance looking that. down into the the model of the hedge maze, yes. and then you get the over the overhead shot, and it zooms down, and Wendy and Danny are walking around inside the model, yeah, and then model. it comes down and down and down. The, you know, it does it does that again, and you you have inside the house, you have her models of the house, and then inside her models of the house, you have more models. It more goes models. down yeah. and down yeah, and down. Like you even have this, ever- this thing going on where it will focus on one of the models. The, the models will be central in the frame and then it will cut to a shot that's ostensibly in the house mm. but the house is framed and the characters are framed like that model shot was an awful lot yes. is, is done like on those uh, telescopic lenses so that yeah. you know even close-ups of people are kind of woozy because they're sort of on the wrong lens they're on mm. the they're on mm. the wrong lens for what should be naturalistic drama but an awful lot of the um the shots in, of the interior of the house are done on a lens um where uh, the the background and the foreground are sort of elongated away from each other, which looks more like one looking through a hole into a doll's house. So yeah. it, it, it you know that that. But I, I was inevitably reminded. It's, that's a good shout about 
the Overlook Hotel, Jack. I was sort of reminded as well about um, M.R. James as the Haunted Dolls House, and because there's yes. a, you know, that's also about that's a, an abusive a family, family dynamic, a family yeah. locked yeah. into an abusive destiny. Yes. Yeah, one mm-hmm. based on narrative, one based on inheritance. But of course, inheritance is just another kind of narrative. Mm-hmm. Um, another kind so of hereditary as well. Another kind of hereditary. Exactly, right? So um, yeah, that that was that that was quite pleasing. It's like ah, we've got a touch of James in here. Yes, that's lovely. On the subject yeah. of the models and the reality being, I'm convinced that at least some of the long shots, the ostensibly realist, real world long shots of the house nestling in the trees or along the mountain, I'm convinced that some of those are models. Mm. If you look yeah. at them closely, a, a lot of them look like models. Mm. They do, and D- deliberately, deliberately so. Right. Sure. Deliberately so. They're even a lot of the scenes. I, I noticed it this time around. They're shot as though there's a synthetic light shining through the window. So a child has a big torch or something, you know, the lighting is often not correct or rather not. There's natural. impossible. Yeah. There's impossible light all the way through this film. There's, there's light that can't possibly be there filtering through um, boards in the ceiling, in the attic and stuff like that. It's <laughs> happening in the middle of the night. And yet there's bright white yeah. light shining down through the, the yeah, th- this film is doing stuff with um, impossible light similar to what again kubrick in the overlook hotel does with impossible space yeah impossible and also um, in, in impossible perspectives i mean i think you were saying earlier jack about it you know in response to me about that dinner table scene about uh, it's difficult sometimes to map perspectives and there's also a realization that because Astor doesn't overdo it and it's one of his strengths uh, there were a couple of times where i had to wind oh. back on the second oh. viewing so for example quite early on there's a there's a shot of peter you know uh puffing away at his bong um you know through the window and you see um someone else's breath cross left to right on the screen yes. that can't possibly be yeah. his because he's in the distance yeah. and you it's you, well you you that presumably is one of the cult um, but there's, there's moments like that. I mean, I, I, there are obvious points, for for instance, when uh, payment as a, you know, as a as a light entity or whatever he is, is very clear to see. There are times where also that 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 uh, that fragment of light travels up and down in the background of scenes very very discreetly. That mm-hmm. I noticed yes. in, in the scene when the the she knocks over some paint. It passes just before the paint. She doesn't. Yeah. If you watch that carefully, she doesn't she do doesn't it. Does she? The pot. No, it, it, it knocks, knocks over itself. By itself. Yeah. And it's just yeah. after a fragment of light crosses down in the. Yes. Uh, but there's no deep focus. <laughs> oh, but we're, we're back to uh, Citizen Kane. We're, we're back to tone. <laughs> but there's no deep focus in that scene, so you can't quite see it. Uh, but it was only by just, you know, winding back and going, "Yep, I think that is," and 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 it's full of moments does like it that. with sound as well there it's are several sound, moments in yeah. the film where there are noises inside the house that can't Creep be happening shuffles if, padding yeah. yeah when they get back from the funeral they're all in the lobby and yet you hear noises elsewhere in the house you hear noises from coming coming from upstairs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i love that it's really it's so subtle it's so subtly and uncannily unsettling you just don't you don't realize unless you're really looking for it it's beautiful stuff mm. beautiful there's so stuff. much that's there's so much that you only consciously notice when you go over this film for a second time or a yeah. third time Definitely. Like, i i rewatched this film twice in preparation for this and those would be the fourth the third and fourth times that i've watched it and it mm-hmm. was only on this rewatch that I consciously plot the fact that, um, you know, the photographs from the, the cultists in the, in the, in the album, and you have the, the wonderfully unsettling photographs of queen Lee in her bridal outfit. And she's being celebrated and worshiped obviously as the bride of payment. And yeah. it's only on this rewatch that I consciously clocked the fact that she's being showered with gold coins. Ah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's fascinating. The fact that this, fascinating another thing aspect. I noticed this time around was when you get that panning shot inside Joan's apartment from the from the front door, um, uh-huh. from inside when Annie's outside trying to get in, and it zooms back and you see all the uh, the occult ephemera and you see the stuff on the table. What's mm-hmm. on the table is Charlie's models, Charlie's toys, and yeah. the scene that's being enacted on the table is the the scene at the end, the arrival yeah. of payment yes. and the yep. worship of the uh, of the occultists. He's yeah. very he's very daring in how 
much he foreshadows. So for, if, uh, I mean, <laughs> for for an actor. So for example, the 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 situation with the mats, the embroidered mats, is right up front. I mean, that mm -hmm. he could have pushed that much yeah. further back. And there's also a, a fantastic moment. Again, I only noticed it on the rewatch, because uh, you know, obviously, it's that wonderful thing about rewatching is when you when you have so much information because you've seen a piece to its conclusion and then you're going in for the second viewing and, and and then suddenly all these other things are popping out and it's in it's in the car park it's in the car park when uh uh annie is is first uh, when she re-meets uh the woman uh J janie is it oh, joan, joan which jo is called by joan yeah. 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 and look at the shopping bags the chalkboard is in her shopping bag. I the chalkboard that she is meant to have had for years because it was her, you know, her. her uh, yeah. It's there. It's visible. It's oh, poking out yeah, of her yeah. shopping bag, and Annie only has to make the connection, but she doesn't make the connection, of course, and that's part of the the horror of it. You, of you mentioned the mat. The the welcome mat should do it because the first time she goes to Joan's apartment, she says, "My mother enough. made these mats." Well, that yeah, that should, should that should do it straight yeah. away, and it's yeah. covered in you know like like all um, Lee's. Um, Queen Lee's mats. It's um, it's covered in occult symbols. Yes. But Annie <laughs> yeah. is not. She she has been institutionalized. This exactly. is this is part of what the film's about by her yeah. psychological um, abuse at the hands of her mother. She has been institutionalized yeah. to just accept Absolutely. all these irrational and insane aspects of her mother's influence over her. So she yeah. just well yes of course everybody has a mat yeah. that my mother made for them. Why wouldn't everybody have a mat that my like one of the things. There are words written all over the walls in their house. There are uh -huh. occult words written all over. And nobody remarks upon nobody it. And Annie knows words. they're there because she puts them in her models of the inside of the house. And she just replicates this thing without questioning it for a moment. Because to her, this is normal. Because it's she lives in this you know, uh, 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 psychological wall. Looking yeah. at the film as a, a sort of child's game, where a child is is, is basically enacting a, 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 a theatre with these characters, that also is a reason why all of that makes sense. It's it's operating within this contrived. Totally, universe. because there are there are casual um, remarks in the movie, and what you were saying there, Jack, about this, how Annie has been institutionalised. Well, it's amazing the effect that the movie has on almost institutionalising the viewer, because there were mm -hmm. there was a moment where I went, "Hang on a moment, well, you, this 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 you know this piece of information." was given not not exactly subtly and i just glossed over it with you know, and it was about three scenes later that well that doesn't work isn't that just casually talking about um annie's mother either trying or succeeding in wet nursing charlie how yeah yes. whoa and it's just casually mm -hmm. it's like well hang on that opens up an awful lot of implications because mm -hmm. she shouldn't be able to um unless there's another child in the mix that's not there anymore mm. that she's had because she the, the ability to lactate for god's sake is is is, is uh, uh, but it's just but they just talk about it as if it's nothing because yeah. it's, it's this institutionalizing effect it's this yeah. um warped reality that the mother is generated that just becomes normal and therefore of course yeah leads into all the rest of the film the arguments the manipulation the control the power games the abuse because it's normal it's inherited it is it is their heritage you get that it's, sort of thematic so... reinforcement at that point as well of the uh this this whole thing about uh, of the title of hereditary abuse of like inherited trauma he says at that point that's her her meeting isn't she when she's talking about this whole dynamic that she has with her mother and it's when you find out a lot about annie uh who she is where she comes from why she's acting the way she is where she says something along the lines of I, 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 she says something like, I sacrificed my daughter to my mother. I gave my daughter gave, to my mother. I gave my daughter to her. Yeah. 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 Because she, she'd gotten away to an extent. She'd gotten away to the extent that she manages to keep Peter away from her mother. I mean, for me, but it doesn't last. She hasn't got, she, she's not strong enough to break away completely. Right. And obviously she, she's, she's guilty. She feels guilty about having defied. The, yes. the abusive oh. authority there and is she a, needs absolutely. to atone she but needs it's... to curry favor back so she says have my daughter she just hands have her over daughter. to her there's an amazing yeah. film 
that it, it takes place off camera and it is the film camera, yes. about her getting Peter away from her grandmother and her being drawn back into her grandmother's sphere and giving her to Charlie. There's another film. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. it's, it, yeah, it's, it's barely referenced, but it's there but it, and it's terrifying. The last it's frame absolutely. is her handing the infant Charlie over to Lee, like, and, and it's like it's, um, the door so closing like, on Kay at the end of The Godfather. Mm. Yeah, right, right. And it's, I mean, it's it's much darker than it actually appears as well, because it has a much grander resonance, like a lot does in this film. It's not just about that in-universe dynamic. That's a commentary upon family. That's a commentary upon the innate traumas and abuses and the, the transactional dynamics of family. Because what, what do we do with grandchildren in our cultures? What are grandchildren symbolically? So often they are exactly that. They are appeasements to our parents, aren't they? They are the yeah. means by which we, re, we redraw relationships with them when we've become estranged from them, when we are well, yeah. moving away from them. I, I mean, I there defy anyone to sit right? down and watch this movie, regardless of the uh, relationship they have with their own parents, even if it's been very good, and not mm -hmm. feel that hand yeah. pressing on their chest in moments well, where they it. are suddenly that's have it. something churned up. But You said the, earlier, Elliot, you said that this film is a gruelling watch, and it's gruelling in a different yeah, way. To it's like, gruelling like, in a different way. Yeah. This is why. This is exactly why. Yes. Like, yeah. It is Fearless. The film yeah. is absolutely fearless. It goes after, in a way that a lot of horror refuses to do. It goes after sacred cows, right? Mm. It goes after instead of saying like instead of family being the means of salvation. This says no, 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 no. Family is the means of damnation. It really shows up how uh, and reminds you of how much you know as i say even even with the 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 the, the most loving and, and kindly and supportive parents in the world that the very institution of the nuclear family for the child is mm -hmm. utter imprisonment yeah. a, a humiliation control yes. um having to uh, you know perform for for uh to to to, to, to be able to do something you know, can yep. I do this? First, you have to perform something or um, uh, conversations or, or arguments that are obviously not embedded in rationality. And of course, a child can't grasp the, the full measure of it anyway. And just all, the amount of times watching this film thinking, you know, I, I, I can't complain about my own childhood, but right. feeling that 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 that. Um, that strangling hand around uh, around one's own throat, going, "Oh God, yeah, this is this isn't fun to see again." It's very <laughs> yeah. easy to say, isn't it, when you're watching it on screen, when you're seeing it in a fictional context? Oh, Annie's a, a terrible parent. Annie is like she's incredibly abusive, which she is. Don't get me wrong; she absolutely is. But is she abnormal within <laughs> the systems exactly. that we're talking about here? Not particularly. Is Peter that abnormal as the, the diffident, largely sort of disinterested father? Not really, no. These this dynamics, is, is, okay, uh, they're yeah, yeah. they're exaggerated. As an everyday, as an everyday totally. pattern, it's fairly typical. It's fairly um, typical. And the, the other thing is that every, I mean, it, there are part, there are times in the film where I loathe Annie. I'm so angry with her at what she does. She's, she's, yeah. she's terrible. The way she, the scene where um, she, yanks charlie in out of the garden charlie has gone walking in her in her stocking feet and she grabs her by the arm and she pulls her across the garden and she says to her are you some kind of idiot and it's it's mm -hmm. painful to watch it's horrible yeah. but Bearing you know that there well, are that charlie's bereaved at that moment she's just lost a grandmother yeah. as well yeah there are many moments like that in the film where i just i despise annie but yeah. she is surrounded by people who are in in the i mean Stephen through his very passivity oh, Stephen, is is God. manipulative and controlling yeah. um Al, um i keep on calling him alex because that's the actor's name I peter know, yeah. um <laughs> the son he, he he has learned so much from her as well that the, the dinner table scene the argument at the dinner table she yeah. behaves atrociously in that scene but it started because peter needles her He's, yeah. he's trying to do to her what she does to him, and he's got it from her. And, of course, she realized Annie has learned it all from, from, from her mother from as her well. Mother. So Annie exactly. is a victim. Annie That's is a victim in this as well as a perpetrator. They're all That's perpetrators it. and victims cycling through this, yeah. this endless, inescapable, vicious circle. That's in it. fact, it's That's one it. of the exactly. things about the, the, the movie that I thought was potentially a problem for it uh, 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 in terms of what Ari Aster is trying to do and the screenwriters and everything, because I, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, Annie and her behavior. And yet there were, there are points 
there were points in the early stages of, of rewatching this film where I started to think to myself, I'm a little worried that this film looks at times like it's going for the woman that it's um, that it's presenting. You know, she's a, she's a no good mom. She puts her kids in danger. She's negligent. Oh, my God. She works. She's an artist. She needs to give that up and invest all her energies into being a good mom. <laughs> and, and, and I'm thinking if that's if that can't be the takeaway from this movie. It, it, it yeah. can't be that blunt and, and bludgeoning. But what I but, but then I think the, the it, 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 what unfolds and what ends up working in its favor is that is how it subverts. It. I mean, firstly, it seems to notice it, as we've just said. So it, it's less of a moral and more of a revealing yeah, uh, with yeah. an implied critique. I don't think it's moralizing at all. No, and secondly, this is a film, lest we forget, about a patriarchal demon. But it's a yeah. film in which the men are pretty much either redundant or useless, although they are <laughs> valued as symbols. So it's a film about women, but each woman, yes, is either a locus of evil or a bad or, or bad behavior or manipulation. But then you reach the end of the movie. And, you know, I did have this worry about it. I thought, ah, you know, is this, this feels a bit at times like it's attacking Annie as a woman. But then, of course, no one comes out of this film well by the end. It doesn't show Stephen in a good light. It doesn't show. It shows Peter as a victim, uh, diffident, needling. Uh, Charlie is a victim. Uh, the, the grandmother well, Charlie is almost both as a, absent, right? Charlie is yeah. a vessel. What you see of Charlie is largely Paimon, right? The, the, well, I find, I find that question. ambiguous. I find that yeah. ambiguous. Yeah, me I, too. Not, I'd love I'm to come sure back to that. on that one. I'm not entirely sure. It is difficult. It is difficult because there is a point in the last sequence after the entity has inhabited Peter where it's referred to as Charlie. Mm. Yes. In the last, I, the very yeah. last sequence, I, which is interesting, isn't it? I appreciate. I I'd like there. to come back to that, but I appreciate yeah. what Elliot's saying because I had very similar feelings. Um, there's, there are other ways in which this film has potentially troubling um, aspects to it. For instance, it, it, I mean, it does. It once again um, basically um, libels o occultists, people who, who yes. practice the occult, yeah. and that's not something I have any actual belief in. But it's something no. that many people in the world do believe in, and they practice it. And like any practitioner of any religion 99.9% .9 yes. of them 99.9% .9 of the time are completely harmless normal yeah. um people who aren't doing anybody any harm in fact and when there it comes is, to this occultism still, you know i would say that it's it's even it's even more so they are just completely harmless you know completely there's hardly any innocuous yeah yeah it's yeah. It, there's no organizing principle for the most part so so th there is still we are still doing this we are still yeah essentially libeling this group of people as yeah. dangerous although i don't think this film is actually talking about actual occultists in the real world in the same way that the entities that it refers to in in terms of uh, payment for instance we've talked a little bit about this in the back channel he doesn't yeah. really in the film he doesn't really have much relationship at all to the actual figure in the, the, uh, the solomonic texts or the goetia yeah, or anything like that it's very that. little but it does still is, it is still doing that entity, satanic so. panic thing isn't it and that's you know that is it's, that is a worry i think that's it, I, I and it is, there it is, is also the fact problem. there is also oh. the fact that in the casting of millie shapiro who is brilliant <laughs> by the way she's so good um we are still linking evil at least in some sense yeah. with non-standard physical appearance aren't we yeah. yes yeah. um yeah. and that i find that disturbing i that is yeah. an aspect of the film that i genuinely do not like it's not that yeah. i I mind her being in it because I think she gives an amazing performance. She's brilliant. But there is right? a suggestion. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, but there is a suggestion of linking spiritual evil with mm -hmm. non-standard, what what people would call non-standard physical appearance. And I do find and that also um, neuroatypical people, right? I think that that yes. the, there is possibly there is possibly an escape hatch for that. I mm -hmm. mean, I I agree. And again, rather like. Uh, how Annie seems to be the target for quite a lot of the film's uh, mm. disgrunt a disgruntled moment. Um, uh, it, it's um, it, there, there are escape hatches, and one of the things I because I I agree with you, uh, but then I thought, well, this this is a film that is very strong on how deeply into history and mythology, even the quasi mythology that 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 the film runs on, 
the mm-hmm. dominance of the image of a strong, able-bodied male runs. And this is a film that goes into how women are rejected, how, in a sense, disability or difference is rejected, how men That's... and boys are prized, how virility is prized. And unsurprisingly, mm-hmm. if you are being driven by historical forces and mythological forces, many of which you, you know they don't fully understand, but which crunch up against the structures of modern life, especially, as I said before, the nuclear family, then it's not going to be all that great on your mental health, of course. But one of the the, th- the things I find interesting is that we get um, for, for, for Peter to be the prize. Uh, it just seems so heavily ironic. Um, <laughs> and even the last shot is of this, I mean, presumably, you know, Peter is gone. He, he, he's, he's, been, he, he's been eroded down. He, he's had the chance made uh, 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 to him and he's, he's effectively dead and he's been... <laughs> Payman looks around bewildered and yeah. and just sort of like, uh, just like Peter did. So it's like, I think there are escape hatches in this movie is, is basically where I'm going. And that is, like, there yeah, is yeah. an irony here that that which is prized is symbolized by these kind of useless guys or mm-hmm. guys. And, yeah. and all the work is done by women. And, and, and one of the women happens to be a young woman, as you say, there is a, there is a, danger of the, the uh, and, and it's not even a danger it, you know it kind of is there they are linking well she's the, the vessel for payment and um she's a uh a, a, a neuro atypical neurodivergent mm-hmm. um so you know there is that that but then the film is also running on this idea that anything that is not virile young and male is rejected by payments payment, well do you yeah. anyway yes i, I don't i think yeah. that's the key isn't it yeah. yeah, the key is the character of the cult, really. Um, yeah, like the the potentially misogynist misogynist reading of the film is, it's it, it's militated against by firstly the character of Stephen, who is passive and um, he's negligent. He's he's emotionally and phys- you know and 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 uh, practically negligent negligent in every respect, and he has at least as much blame on him mm-hmm. for all he just he just sits and he's a psychiatrist subtextually yeah. he was annie's psychiatrist that was yes. actually explicit in an earlier version um mm-hmm. so firstly he marries his patient somebody that's vulnerable and mm-hmm. you know, un- under his power again yeah. abuse dynamics <laughs> yeah. um, and then he allows all this to happen he sort of uh, supposedly he enforces a, a no contact rule at some point but it's too little too late and they go back mm-hmm. they go back on it so he is he, he is at least as bad as she is. In, oh, he's massively in my book, he's worse. Oh, my word. He's yeah, massively absolutely. Cold. And the other when thing he... is, as, you, as you've been saying, the whole thing is taking place within the context of this um, explicitly patriarchal yep. ideology, um, yep. which, which rejects um, femaleness essentially arbitrarily, completely mm-hmm. arbitrarily, in favor yeah. of a maleness that is... Like I mean, Peter's Peter is the other male in the story, and like Stephen, he is intensely passive. He is acted yes, upon at every stage. Passive. He is yeah. he is fetishized for his maleness, but it doesn't mean anything. It's it doesn't just mean a anything. symbol it's of patriarchal. Like, yeah. what, can, what can it possibly matter to an entity like Paimon? Right? Why would it prefer a male host? It makes it makes it makes no sense in the same way that the intentions of the cults of the of the occultist make n- doesn't really make sense you know but i think it's because we're, sort of, we're all we're into fireback here aren't we it's uh, they've created payment they've yes. on their knees and erected yes. a totem in their own image. patriarchy exactly and it is in that. their own image and it's the, the why... image of the american settler yes as, as jack has said you know the the middle class bourgeois capitalist um you know it's their god white exactly that you i mean jack you made the point in the in the chat earlier that he is essentially analogous to the sort of american fundamentalist sort of white western christ right it's as it's as confused and as redrawn from the actual sort of biblical christ as payment is from the original demon it doesn't make any sense it's internally contradictory and it's all about the agendas of the believers right yeah. That's all it is. And the fact. agendas of the believers are entirely materialist. It's about temporal power. Exactly. It's about yeah. power on this earth. And also it's it's Pikyun, isn't it? What they want, what they explicitly want through all of this grand conspiracy and all of this this metaphysics that they access. So in this world there's magic. There is honest to God magic 
ghosts, demons. There could even be angels for all we know. There could be higher principalities and powers. But what do they want by accessing it? They want money. But who they is most likely money. to win that for them? It is not going to be Charlie. She's a she's a young woman and she has got some kind of quote unquote disability. It's not going to be Annie. She's a middle aged woman. Uh, no, and I... It's got to be. Be young, you know, because that's the only one yeah. who can get, can go, can operate in a world like yeah. that. Yeah, the young man, right, right. Well, and he'll, 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 he'll get over it. He'll, he'll stop being a stoner. He'll, he'll pull his socks <laughs> up. He'll be right, fine right. because he's got all these privileges. He doesn't have to try mm -hmm. hard. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, I think that, that you were saying about Stephen as well, because I find the moments when he interrogates Annie's emotions. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is, as you say, it's, it's, it's not in this version, but it is an earlier draft that he drafts that he was, was the psychologist. But so therefore he should have the knowledge. <laughs> he should know better. He considers sending her away. I mean, that's very telling. Mm -hmm. uh, he withdraws well, information I from from her. Um, but what is again interesting? It's it's what I I'll use the phrase again. It's that escape hatch thing because one of the things I find I found sort of cruelly funny, but it is funny is is the is the moment when he goes up in flames because the whole idea of the movie is it's pointing a finger at Annie and women uh -huh. saying you behave like witches, you behave like witches. Uh -huh. Look, you're, you're you're running seances, you're summoning demons, and the woman should end up emoliated. Right, and it's him. And that's uh -huh. brilliant. And, and, and through I know his that... ignorance as well, right? Yeah, through yeah. His, one of the things that's so interesting about that character is sublimely all the way through, even when he's explicitly told and shown that something is going on, he just doesn't know. He just doesn't have any power or comprehension or agency <laughs> outside of like what patriarchy gives him, right? And he's punished. He's... I mean, it's so, yeah. it's amazing. That. He's institutionalized as well, in the same yes. way that Annie just doesn't think twice about the yeah. fact that there are weird triangles on the floor mm -hmm. of her house and weird mystical words on the walls of her house. He does, he you know, see he sees. He sees what happens in the in the little improvised seance. He mm. sees the candle. He sees the flame, etc. Um, but it doesn't fit within his his institutional frame of reference. So it just gets it just gets edited it gets forgot, out, right? It just it literally gets yeah. edited out by the film. And it's it is it's this example of how you've got the the medium and the narrative. It's what would be called ludo narrative in a video game, of course, where the me like the technical and the actual themes marry together. It's beautiful. So in that regard, doing? it's almost like a, a meta commentary. The film itself is part of the of the universe of the the forces in this world. Yes, but what he's doing is only what everybody who is um, signed up to a totalizing belief system does all the time, which is it, this thing that I've just seen that can't mm. be true because if yes. it is then that means then the thing that i'm committed to believing isn't and i yes. know that the thing i'm committed to believing is true ergo this other thing that i've just seen can't really be there yeah and it relates that's back cult, to the, that's what, cult uh, logic yeah. yeah very much so it relates back to what elliot was talking about earlier as well where you have this deliberate confusion of perspective where it seems like annie might be seeing something different to all of the other characters but you also get that with steven as well yes could yeah. be that he's not seeing what Annie's seeing because that, that's part of the film. It's that fundamentalist tract which doesn't only happen, of course, in religion. Uh, because you, uh, you know, with Stephen, it's you, you have someone mm -hmm. who won't look beyond the parameters of his training and his right. position. Um, and of course, this is the same thing that will be leveled up. You know, anyone in a, in a cult, or uh, you know, it's it's something that can be uh, anyone who has a a. a, a I don't like the phrase unified field theory because I don't think anything really should work, really works like that. But um, you know, once someone uh, betrays the sense of having a unified field theory, uh, but it's operating on a fundamental level, well, of course they're absolutely stymied. Um, yeah. yeah, and he's, just, more, he's just there. I mean, it becomes even more fascinating when you you look at again when you draw yourself back and look at that first scene. When you look at that opening sequence, when you've got the camera panning into the doll's house, because it's both, it's simultaneously a case that you have multiple conflicting perspectives, but also those perspectives as, as aspects of a wider one, which is ours and the camera. It's whatever abused child is playing with the dolls, right? Which, when I say when I say that this, you can read this film as an abused child playing with dolls and expressing its trauma. I don't mean a specific child. 
what I mean is us. I mean humanity. When I say child, yeah. I mean any one of us that's born into the systems of history. We're all that child, and we're all playing that game right now because we're part of it. We're innate. We're both the players and the dolls at the same time. And it's something that this film gets at so beautifully. And again, I think it's why it's so hard to watch. I think it's why it, it's, it's so hard. hard. It's built it, into the it's built into the psychological power dynamics of the nuclear family. Yeah. The, yes. the bourgeois Which nuclear we're all family part is just of, built right? in. We're all part yeah. of. We we know we are. Whether we acknowledge it or not, we we feel it. We definitely that dinner scene in particular, I think, is the one. It's the one where it really comes to a head where a lot of people get so close to seeing things that they've all experienced. Yeah. All of us have had that dinner. Mm. Every single one of us has had that dinner at one point or another where tensions and power dynamics and the, the confusions of perspective have spilled over and there's been an argument or there's been a confrontation of things. And they're and, sat in a triangle where the, the, right. where the males uh, yes. form a yes. closer right. bond and she's out on her own. She's, mm-hmm. she's, she's at the top of that isosceles triangle. Yeah. yeah, It's another yeah. triangle. And of course, uh, you know, what, what may have actually been her support in that dynamic is gone. Charlie has been taken away. Her mother was never there, by all accounts. So she just never Although had. Although again, that you know, balancing saying, factor uh, uh, th- about this film, which is intensely interested in male symbols and, and maleness, and, and and there is, as we've explored already, the danger that it that it, that it ends up running headlong into the thing that it may be a critique of. Well, there's something very interesting in in the grandmother effect. It's called the grandmother mm-hmm. effect. You know, um, that that whole early development mother grandmother child link being a very important link for, for nurturing, mm-hmm. which Stephen will understand from his position as a psychologist, because he will be right. aware of um, uh, the, the, the psychology of development. So the horror really should be the return of the father. That's where the horror of yeah. a film like this would normally go, or typically go, or traditionally go, or, or the violation of patriarchy into that setup. The mother, the grandmother, and, the, and Charlie would be, the, would be the, the, the unit that we'd be gunning for. Mm-hmm. But ultimately what happens in this movie, of course, is that the grandmother is, a, is the threat, even yes. before we turn up as viewers of the narrative. Which is ironic, of course, because she's yeah. dead, right? But I mean, that's, that's dead. fabulous, right? It's just so, fabulous, isn't um, it? Stephen is redundant at the same yeah. time as having a, um, a a very profound effect just simply by being yeah. that symbol of, of patriarchy where he can decide. It, it's very interesting how it almost operates like Candyman, where when she's where in Candyman, when she's institutionalized, it's a male yeah. figure that can just say, I can take your life away from you. And Stephen pretty much threatens that. Pretty much. Yeah. Her, I, will, I can take your life away from you because you're behaving hysterically, you know, as, as women are always uh, portrayed as, as doing in a lot of horror movies. This film makes mm-hmm. more of an interesting point about it. But he can change her life because he's not only a man, he's not only her husband, he's the one in control, but the film implies, or in an earlier draft of the film, he was her psychologist as well. Every, he can just change everything. He withholds yeah. information from her. Now, it seems... Yeah almost seems noble yeah. when he keeps the information back about the desecration of the grave but then it's not really it's no. not really noble that it just has a superficiality well. his, ab- no- his abuse and manipulation is always through passivity it's always through silence yes. it's always n- through not doing things yeah, there is exactly a there is way in which this echoes the witch actually because when we talked about the witch we talked about the way in which it's a it's a devastating um portrayal of patriarchy by the simple maneuver of showing us uh, a man and a woman who are trying to inhabit patriarchally patriarchally prescribed roles in the family that they are not suited for by their natures they are the wrong way around Um, and that's there's something similar in this one as well well i think all the the, the, the films like this which do focus in on the family as a structure what they end up doing is um it it's it's just in microcosm making us very very aware how every system runs like this it is not people it is the impossible positions they're put in and you can take that right up to sort of uh, something like world leaders i mean i know there are Mm -hmm. world leaders who are utter bastards and they're there because they're utter bastards Mm -hmm. and then there are also there have been in history and there have you know fundamentally good people driven to do terrible evil because they are part of an institution that doesn't allow them to do anything but that um, you know, it's, bound it's by all the systems. system. It's all systems. It's all systems. The nuclear systems. family is, you know, yes. there's a lot to be yeah. said about the nuclear family being in itself a kind of 
it's it's a it, it's a bad construct. It's yeah. it's a poisonous it's a kind of miniature... construct, even when good people are involved. Mm-hmm. It's a kind of miniature version of all the other um, abusive, exploitative social dynamics that it's based upon and that are exactly. based upon it. And that's where you get into the metaphor of houses within houses within houses. With houses you yes, are yes, watching yes, exactly. the yeah. same structure down again at every level. You go down the next level, it's the same structure. You go down inside that to the next level down, it's the same structure again. And it's very, this film is very focused on the house the architecture of the house i mean i know haunted house movies tend to be even even the worst ones tend to be about Mm -hmm. rooms and doors and floors and stairs and things like that because they just that's just the nature of the genre but this film is particularly focused on it 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 looks at walls and windows and roofs and and floors all the time and it's always about how people are enclosed inside the spaces of the of the domestic the the nuclear family Mm -hmm. and that's really that's very key because the what is the nuclear family but a kind of a way in which you can trap people together in privacy that allows them to do terrible things to each other without anybody else seeing it and of course, it replicates the idea, for example, of the heteronormative as well, um, and that's why you have these huge ruptures um, when you know uh, kids come out to their parents and things like that, mm. because it, it, it establishes this as, a, as as the primary. And it was one of the things I noticed in the film, actually, and um, I'm quite happy to throw this open because, in a sense, I don't really feel terribly <laughs> qualified to to go into too much detail about this but I, I it did strike me uh, uh, watching it about how much this movie can be read as a kind of trans story in its way um, or head or at least heading in that direction certainly the transition of charlie to peter effectively mm-hmm. it struck me as being treated in a way that i couldn't help but you know be reminded of the contrast between female to male transition to male to female transition and how they are socially received very differently from each other and of course this is a film about patriarchy and in payment's case this is it's literally said this is the correcting of an error that's very loaded Uh, now that's interesting as i say i don't feel terribly i'm 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 loath to go too too much further than that because i don't feel terribly qualified to go to i think you would need the a trans perspective to get to grips with that however i do wonder if that is a thread that is there in the in the movie because the ch- you know it, it's very strongly about this the, the, these um, patriarchal symbols, but mm-hmm. also with the realization that the um, I say socially that there is there is a very interesting wrinkle um, in in the perception of male to female versus female to male transition. Oh, I Just, think it's there. I think I think it is there, and the, the the reason I think when it becomes overt is what we were talking about earlier when you get that final sequence after. Paimon Charlie has inhabited Peter, and one of the cultists, ref- I think it's Joan actually, refers to him as Charlie. Actually, says it's all right, Charlie. Yes, yes. And yes. there's that yeah. that this- look of confusion on Peter's face. Peter, mm. Charlie, Paimon, whatever's going on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This takes us back to the question of to what extent Charlie is Paimon. Um, yes. And that's yeah. a, that's a really interesting one. I I don't know that that's answerable. I don't I don't mean to dodge the the very interesting question that Elliot's just brought up. But uh, like him, I don't feel qualified no, to comment. Like, yeah. on. Yeah. and yeah. also I think Except within I, the, within the film, it's I, it's muddled, isn't it? Within the film, it's very very it, deliberately so. It's hard to say. Well, I think I I think if it has um, if there's a trans reading here, then I feel like it's probably a reading against the grain, if you know what I mean. Yes, it's, it's, yes. And that's fine. That's a good thing to do with texts, read them against the grain. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like what the film is, act, well, not actually, that's the wrong word. For me, what the film is doing is much more about um, the imposition of patriarchal norms and patriarchal standards. Yes. And of yeah. course, that has a great deal of application to the trans experience. I wouldn't yeah. dream of saying otherwise. Um, yeah, that's, again, I don't, I don't feel confident going much further no, I than that. I'd be interested in <laughs> uh, I'd be interested but it's to fascinating. Hear other people's I was, perspective. I think it's I a real um, vein for of exploration yeah. for, for someone who can bring that lived experience to bear who's you know uh, but but it's not yeah. me. Um, oh, but I, I think ask, I would be fascinated. I'd love to ask Billy Martin about this actually. Yeah. Uh formerly Poppy Z Bright. 
That'd oh, be amazing, yes, wouldn't it? Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, wouldn't that be incredible? Yeah. Would that not be incredible? Wow, yeah. Or I might I'll drop him a mail later and see if he if he responds. Oh interesting. Yeah. If he's interested. That would because be fascinating. The, uh, certainly There's with potentially to... some sticky wickets there, you know. Yes, like there are. If, if, there oh, are. definitely. In terms of the if coding we're seeing, the, yeah. Yeah, if we're seeing Charlie as I mean, I can't get away from the fact that they cast an actress with a quote unquote birth defect and therefore a a, a, a particular physical appearance. Mm. I, you know, I don't mean to harp on in this. I hate harping about this because I, I want to just be able to appreciate her brilliant performance. Yeah. But they did cast somebody with a particular um, appearance. And I, I this does worry me. And it, the, the, mm. the imputation of um, neuroatypicality to Charlie worries yes. me as well. And I I worry about the connection there with, you know, like the idea of a male spirit inside a female body. I don't like that. There are problems. There are problems. I mean, I can... I, as I say, I, I think see. the film is uh, is in many ways a masterpiece. I think the film has real difficulties. I think mm-hmm. the film has escape hatches. I don't... Yeah. But I'm also very aware that you know, honestly, if I would put my hand on my heart, I kind of want the film to have escape hatches. So I'm yeah. probably prizing yeah, so some of them open. Yeah. Um, right. We're but, looking for I mean, it's, 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 tricky, it's a tricky film. I, I mean, it, it, I did say this when we were talking about it in our chat, when I said, you know, I was looking forward to it tonight. There, there are mm-hmm. parts of this film that I find very difficult to, 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 to grapple with um, because of, of choices. Um, yeah. I don't think they rupture the film entirely but they they give me pause for thought it's definitely i mean definitely i mean part of the commentary that charlie operates as as someone who's clearly neurodivergent it it sort of comes to a head in that sequence you were talking about jack that wonderful one where you get so much revealed about annie as a mother after the uh, the grandmother's funeral when she drags charlie in from wandering around outside she's not really doing anything she's not doing anything you know abstruse or overt she's just wandering outside that's all she's doing and she tries to impose upon her a particular identity yeah he wants her to be quote unquote normal Normal. she wants to be like the rest of the children right yeah so you're going with your brother to this i mean it's the most absurd (sighs) thing that scene because it's she's 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 the the wrong age she's the wrong young fella just wants to go to a party with other teenagers for God's right. sake, and let him go. Let I mean, him it's go. Like, what does she think is going to... He should not have that level of responsibility. Right. What is but he, 15? Also, the but, imposition and it, upon Charlie, the imposition upon Charlie, what, what, what Annie is doing there is saying, be normal for once. That's right. That's what she's yeah. doing. That's what she's doing. He's me. He's me. Be the daughter I need you and yeah. want yeah. you to be. Yes. So be normal. But it's so yeah. obsessive that I think and she's trying to control... Leads... She's, she's trying to make... Peter not drink by giving him the responsibility of looking after his little sister. Well, that's right. guilt. That's, that's using guilt. guilt to control people. And Absolutely. it's the second occasion. It's the it's the second of a uh, 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 social occasion in the in the movie where that girl doesn't have her epipen. The yes. first time it's in the church, and and um, Annie just remark, oh, 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 don't make sure she doesn't make sense. Who doesn't bring the epipen of a child, a vulnerable child, and you're yeah. the, and 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 you're it's all put on Peter, but it's like you're going to a party. There's going to be crisps, nuts, yeah. drink, and you haven't even got the epi. Not she shouldn't be going anyway, but you no. haven't even got the epi. But it's also it it go it cuts further than that. She's not in a position to enter into that party as an equal and i don't mean because of uh, i mean because of her age her age it's right. it's, it's an a- we know what it was like i mean you know the the, the difference between a, a 15 year old and a 12 year old yes. is a yawning chasm it's a yep. chasm right and it, it might be 20 it, years between <laughs> you get the impression of annie because of her upbringing she is emotionally uh, and in terms of her relations to other people quite stunted very so she probably so. didn't have yes. that experience. So she may yeah. not actually get this. She may not get the experience yeah. of of people in general when they're that age. It's not an excuse. No, it's but not. The experience is everything as an attack as well. Yeah. That's that's yes. a, that's a real hallmark of the person who has been um, psychologically abused and dominated yes. by a, a narcissistic parent. Yeah. She expe- the people phoning up. 
and saying, look, obviously the first thing we want to say is we're sorry about what's happened to your family, et cetera, if you need time, et cetera. But we do need to know what's going on with the exhibition. She could pick up the phone and say to them, I mean, there is a degree of hypocrisy in the in the messages because obviously what they're phoning about is is their is their business venture. Exactly. They need to know, etc. But it's still it's a reasonable enough question. They need to know. She could pick up the phone at any time and say, "Yeah, look, I need longer to arrange this." Yeah, this yeah. this show. She doesn't. What she does is she seeds and glares at the phone because she experiences anything that looks even faintly like a criticism Honestly. or anything that makes her look bad as an unreasonable attack. Mm -hmm. And she, she experiences with Charlie offense. as she experiences the existence of Charlie as a reproach to her. The yes. grueling scene where they get back from the funeral and Charlie is in bed and she's visibly upset and scared. And she says, who's going to take care of me? Mm -hmm. And Annie's response to that is to pull this sort of, oh, what about me face? Yeah, what about and to me? say, oh, here, here I am. She's angry that? with the girl for being, yeah. despite the fact that she says late in another scene, I gave her my daughter. You basically right. gave this child to your mother to, to be her mother for you. And now mm -hmm. you're angry with a scared child because she doesn't yeah. know what's going to be going to happen now that she's left with somebody who, as far as she's concerned, is like, her secondary or tertiary parent. Exactly, she, yeah. she, she, she has a great deal of submerged hostility to both her children, yeah. particularly Charlie. And it's, that hostility I, mean, I know she, she's not partly out of the fact on any sort of conscious she's level. Been... She's not trying to cause Charlie harm, but yeah. that is the effect of her actions towards Charlie. She does cause Charlie harm. As you say, Charlie goes around without her EpiPen. Question she ends up, of, but, but that yeah, Charlie could ask, but at the same time, it, it, Annie will turn that into a criticism. Are you saying I'm not your mother? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Charlie can't yeah, you're not. say that. and She won't think that. But no, you haven't been. You, By your own admission, you haven't been. <laughs> it's why her eruption at the dinner scene is so profound. She is, she is ultimately trying to um, put the responsibility onto Peter when it's hers. It's all her. She killed Charlie. And if anybody killed Charlie, it. it's her. It's not Peter. This is the thing. Peter's, Peter's thing where he does this, you seemed like you wanted to say something, that is, it, that is itself manipulative and, and emotionally aggressive. And again, we, he's is. learned that from her. Yeah, but she is. experiences it. And in a sense, she's right this time. She's being called on her bullshit. She's sitting there like a sulky teenager herself, yeah. pulling this face and going, hmm, oh, <laughs> <only> <laughs> things people awesome. are saying. Yeah. And somebody, somebody calls her on it. And yeah. She's but she's confronted by her own immaturity. I want absolutely I, I that. And you know, hang on. props to Peter. I mean, yes, he is he is using her her means of doing this, but he is trying to have the conversation. Yes, which is more than she's doing, right? Yeah, the child is actually much more willing to confront the situation than either of the damn parents. And, all and he's as for saying Gabe, really as, is, for, it's as not, for Stephen, he's not even he's trying to like just deny everything, right? It's just like let's let's there. bury he doesn't ourselves. Want to hear it. He's, in yeah. these he's just trying to make everybody be quiet. He doesn't want to yes. hear it. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Everything's All business Peter's normal. I've made dinner. I've made dinner. You're coming to dinner. We're going to have a family dinner. Because this is where I'm king, right? This is where I'm comfortable, where I don't have to confront everything. I'm the, It's the household, yeah? Yeah. Just don't don't talk about it. Just say, oh, I'm going to the movies and then slip out and that's fine. I don't, you know, brilliant whatever you're feeling. Brilliant therapy, by the way, Dad. You know, yeah, great, great psychiatry there. And this is yeah. probably one of the reasons why I have to, I, I sort of do hang on to the idea that Charlie is more than just a vessel for payment. Um, um, I, because, yeah, I do. Um, I, I mean, firstly, it doesn't quite hold because you then you you get extra questions. It, it, for example, why is payment in a state of innocence? Is it because payment mm. is born again through through Charlie? Because payment is acting like a child in every sense. Why why is payment frightened? Why is mm. payment, uh, you know, um, so I, I, I prefer this. And also, I, yeah, I guess because of some of the other things, that, some of the other issues of the film, um, if you're going to cast Millie Shapiro, who is brilliant, as Jack said, and you are casting her partly because of something that is not to do with her being a good actress, then uh, I kind of want Charlie to exist as a, as a full character. I think that's only just. And therefore... But I think actually, the I, the notion that it is purely payment, I think raises more questions than it than it answers. It's almost a bit yeah. like Deckard is the replicant. It it, it raises yeah. more questions than 
than it than than, it, yeah. than anything else. You yeah, know? I mean, the that's nature... just their construction of it, isn't it? That's the cultist's yeah. point of view. Well, we mm. we're not obliged to take that at face value. No, what we're we definitely... see of Charlie, what we see of Charlie is of a thinking, feeling individual. Just to them, Charlie is irrelevant. Not. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you listen to Millie Shapiro in interviews that she's given about the role, she's she's very clear on the fact that Charlie is a person and yeah. who has thoughts and feelings yes. of her own. She doesn't just say, "Well, I was playing a, a demon in a state I of in, uh, you know, in a state of innocence or confusion." Yeah. About she she talks about Charlie and I how Charlie thinks think and how Charlie that the, the 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 cluck or the click is payment, <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. The cluck or the click the cluck, is yeah. him basically. I'm here. But that's all like he a, is. It's like a pattern, isn't it? It's like a resting pattern or, yes. or, or a program yes. that is activated. And exactly. it's, it's influencing it like her drawings are influenced by the imperative yes. and her little golems and models that she yeah. makes from found objects and bits but and pieces. Is, they express yeah. what is inside her. But it's not it's not that it's 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 not sitting in there sort of working the controls. She's no, trying no, to that's she's right. trying yes, to use absolutely. art actually to express this yes. thing that's inside her that she doesn't understand or recognize as part of herself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a, ironic, it's, isn't it's a piece it? I mean, of software if, uh, that's in there. That that's all. But and she's the hardware, and there's all the other other software going on. It's just one piece of software. It was a Trojan horse, actually. So it's a virus. That's it, right? Um, and you actually and, see it. You actually see it when Payman ultimately transitions or starts to transition to Peter, because you get that sequence in the schoolyard where I think it's Joni, isn't it, who, who tries to expel Peter mm. as sort of like his consciousness, his his soul from the vessel. But it doesn't happen all at once. Once. No, it's not like she says the words and Peter's gone. No, it's this weird, strange, slow transition where you get to be really bits worn of down, Peter don't they? Really and down. bits of Paimon coming through, mm. and it's it's really strange. The whole the notion of the parasitism of Paimon is actually really confused in yeah. the film, and again, it's deliberate. It's not it's not like a mistake. It's deliberate. Even at I the like end, that. when Paimon is like taken, it's hard to. I like that yeah, it's hard to follow too. and hard to make because it's a, it, it, we're talking about the uncanny. We're talking about the magical. Exactly. It, yes. it shouldn't work like a and like a well oiled machine. Paimon is not a demon like Pazuzu is. Paimon is very much like many of the entities we've discussed. He's like this. He's like the entities in the black and white lodges in in Twin Peaks mm. and Fire Walk with me. He's this rate of ideas that's based on the beliefs and perspectives and agendas of those who invoke him. He's it's it's odd. It's really unusual. He's he's the he, he seems to be like all the forces of trauma and patriarchy and history and all of that. But he's also the agendas of the older generations for their children, which is entirely materialist, entirely. But it also well, this, oddly confused yeah. in and of itself. He is kind of what the cult make him into. He is he is yeah. what they. Um, he is what they want. They they worship him, but in so doing, I mean, you, you mentioned the Feuerbach thing earlier, Elliot. Yeah. They are worshipping that aspect of themselves Surely, that they've made yeah, into a totem that. pole. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They have erected a, a a graven image that is really a reflection yeah. of themselves. And they've, you know, if if Paimon is a kind of um, pattern, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the metaphor of like the computer program or the computer virus that I stumbled upon before works quite well in that mm -hmm. respect. Mm -hmm. so. If he's a kind of pattern and he takes a kind of form based upon the nature of the people that invoke him, then that works brilliantly. He becomes this rather vulgar, um, squalid, mm -hmm. uh, just a god of money that they want yeah. because that's that's what they've done. They've In, in the same way that um, that the Christians took these old pagan gods and they made them into quote unquote demons. They made them these chthonic yeah. things, um, things of the underworld. Um, in exactly the same way they did with Pazuzu, by the way, we with talked Pazuzu. about this. Yeah, 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 and we course. talked about um, God, right? Exorcist Three. We talked about he's the he's the Babylonian god, I believe, mm. of like the desert and the storms and the locusts yeah. and things like that. But he wasn't evil. You could no. sway him to do things for you. You could get him to protect your children from Lamashtu um, because right. he was her enemy and stuff like that. It wasn't just, and then they, the Christians turn him into a, they flatten him down into this thing. That's just evil, just a demon. Yeah. And in the exorcist, you know, which is what he's just now known as known for. Um, mm -hmm. He's this thing, ironically enough, that preys upon children. It's a complete slander of the original idea yeah. of this entity. They've done the same civilization. Um, 
a Christian civilization, which is inherently, of course, in our era, it's the it's the era of um, it's the civilization of whiteness and imperialism and capitalism. Yeah. It's done the same thing to payment. It's turned it into well, a sort of it stopped it being what it actually was and made yes. it into this grotesque version yeah. of itself. I mean, it's, so it's so. ironic with sort of postmodern Christianity. It's also done it with Christ, of course. Yeah. Well, yes. so much so yes. with yes. Well, that's the because pro- yeah. what they've done, what the cultists have done is they've reinvented the prosperity gospel. The prosperity yeah, doctrine. It. They've just done it with payment instead of Jesus. It's and it's grotesque payment, enough right? when you do it with Jesus, who literally says in the Gospels, give right. away everything you own to the poor or you will go yeah. to hell. Uh, you know, he doesn't stutter, it. does he? He doesn't stutter. No, he does it's not. not unambiguous. It's not ambiguous. It is certainly absolute. in the in the earlier gospels, anyway. By the time yeah. um, the later ones get hold of him, things get a bit muddier. But yeah, I mean, they've turned that into a being who says, you know, yes, you should, you should, um, you should own a private jet and and you should mm. own a Rolex and everything. That means God's pleased with you. And of course, there's a whole history of that through like the you know Calvinism and the doctrine of yeah. the elect and all that stuff. You know, yeah, it's a grotesque misrepresentation. In to that. What, these people, the payment. cultists in this, have just done the same thing, sort of in miniature. Yeah, yeah and I think actually a... one of the things about the, the the film that I wonder, I will I will put it to you, and you can uh, push back at me if you think I'm wrong. Um, mm-hmm. That I think is probably misinterpreted is I, I read a couple of things around uh, the, the, the the film and how it how it works, and there was uh, talk of the um, the decapitations as being ways to release payment i thought well that doesn't really track because there are there are moments he gets into people without anyone else needing to be decapitated and there's a there's a there's a image um when she's looking through the book and she finds the illustration of payment and if you look at the saddlebags there are heads on his there are three Uh, heads on his saddlebag i thought this isn't decapitation to release the spirit they're tokens of payment yeah, yeah, yeah. They're propitiations. They're yeah, propitiations and acquisitions. So this actually tracks far better with the ideas that you've just been talking about. Um, the, 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 the beheadings are payments. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a, it's all a big contract, and those are the heads of agreement. The heads that's, of agreement. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. It's almost it's note, almost though. a gallows joke. <laughs> it is almost a gallows joke because they do do that, don't they? When the heads actually come off, they nod, right? When the that's what it that's what happens. It's it's yeah. like yeah, it's 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 almost like a a visual gag in its own grotesque way. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. No, I'm. I, this is what I really grokked about the film this time round, which is that this is. I don't know if the um, the QAnon anonymous podcast have done this on one of their movie nights, but they really should because this yeah. is a QAnon. Movie. It's yeah. not obviously obviously it's not literally a QAnon movie, oh. but you know, and it doesn't it doesn't like replicate QAnon ideology directly. But it's about the same sort of people doing the same sorts of things because mm-hmm. what what QAnon is is this new religion, this new syncretic conspiracy religion, uh, which is by you know they they can, they are conspirators themselves, conspirators against democracy as we saw on mm-hmm. January 6th and stuff like that. And they do that because they are conspiracy minded and they've done it by creating this syncretic new sort of offshoot of Christianity, which is actually blasphemous by any sort of anything that could be called authentically Christian, but it's this offshoot of um, evangelical Protestantism. And it's all based, you know, it's based upon things like the prosperity doctrine and stuff like that. And their, and their yeah. worldview, which is all about self advancement. And you bring in stuff like conspirituality. They're all into self help. They're all into health food stuff, yeah. um, you know, all, all these things. And when you look at well, the whole thing, it works like an MLM. It works like a cult. It works like a, because they, they work in very similar ways. They recruit yeah. members. They recruit Annie via the via the um, the self help group because the people in the yes. self help group are also among the cultists. Mm-hmm. They try to get her to join the spiritualist group. Joan gets her to join the spiritualist group. The whole point is to sort of recruit her. Uh, you know, I want to come back to who Joan is, by the way, at some point. But yeah, the whole point is to sort of recruit her into their into their ranks as an un, as an unwilling agent. They, yes. you know, Joan love bombs her the way QAnon and other online cult oh, uh, conspiracy the way people cults do, do with right? recruits the way and stuff all like that. Cults do. And it's all about it's all based on. If you look at QAnon, so much of it is like self actualization bullshit and yeah. self help bullshit. And if you look at that book that she finds, Scientology that finds run the same way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And if you How freeze frame that book that she finds and, and you look at what you can read down the side, the stuff about payment in the book is all about 
oh um if you if you approach him in the right way he has skills and he has knowledge yeah. and he has he has abilities and if you act swiftly you can achieve your goals and then you Take get a to personality the, picture of test. the riches <laughs> yeah, that come right. to the conjurer it's like one of these motherfuckers that runs a pyramid scheme giving yeah, a test it's total pyramid scheme it's it? the it's the twin total flames thing scheme. isn't it it's it's this it is exactly that you know they start out as the seemingly innocuous self-help garbage or, or jordan peterson it's that isn't it you know and then it escalates it keeps going it gets more absurd it gets more controlling and they take they break more of you down as you go and build more of you up in their image yeah it's exactly so is very interested in this sort of the the the, the actual dynamics of cults and conspiracy groups yeah. and, and 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 um sort of um subcultures like that that yeah. are inherently abusive and yeah. controlling and the interior way you know we know from midsummer he's very interested in the interior ways in which these things work how they recruit people how they keep hold of people how they control people how that how that meshes with fascism because that's well, in the midsummer. white supremacy mm, is definitely in, in midsummer and i Absolutely. mean it's there in the symbolism Absolutely. i mean some it's here as well i think and it's here yeah and i yeah, think it's, it's in its fascism way and more cults and conspiracy theories and mlms they all work like these these sort of abusive pyramids and i think mm -hmm. you know i feel a bit sort of crude bringing it up but it does chime with ariaster's visual obsession with apexes and 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 yeah. and pointed roofs and things yes. like that there are yes. pyramids yes. and triangles yes. all the way through and it's it, it echoes the, the fact that he's talking mm. about these pyramidal power dynamics mm. that are inherently abusive and controlling of course here he compares cult dynamics with family dynamics and draws some very disturbing conclusions that the as he does in power dynamic, like, yes the power dynamics and the the abuses are very very similar or at least comparative yeah, they work in very that's, similar ways. Yeah. This is one of the things cult researchers, people that look at like QAnon, QAnon works like like this kind of abusive, gigantic, dispersed online family. Mm -hmm. These things yeah. do. Yeah. Wow. I and mean, that, that, you know, is, these people yeah. are like they're the top layer sellers of the MLM. Yes. They're the like one percent at the very top of the pyramid that actually make the profit, while all the people lower down are are filling their houses up with clothes that they can't sell. Yeah. These, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least they're the these are the people that dream of that anyway. These are the people that go to those TED talks and those self help yeah. things and applaud these these entrepreneur type guys that say, yeah, you oh, just got to get out there and get the right yeah. grind set and you'll get rich and stuff. Like that. This is the this is their this is their mindset made into a religion. Yeah. Wow. And it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I never thought of it like that. But yes, it, that is absolutely part of it. There, it's it's this, it's this whole thing of other stories happening off screen. So what you're seeing is the family dynamic that they prey on that those kinds of phenomena prey on you're seeing the bereavement you're seeing the troubles you're seeing the the need for a an identity outside of the family and, and they that's destroy they families they yeah. bankrupt people oh. they destroy marriages they break people up because because people get sucked into it they, they buy the hype and they think well if i just buy enough of this stuff and sell enough of it and hustle I'll I'll start making huge I'll make, I'll make silly mm. money from being a representative of whatever group they've 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 allowed to to get under their skin, mm. and people ruin themselves. They fill their houses up with clothes and makeup and knickknacks and things that they cannot sell because they have to buy them from the company and then sell them on. Mm -hmm. um, and you have a you have a couple of people at the very top of the pyramid creaming off massive profits, and most of the people the the base the base of the pyramid, they're either making nothing or they're they're ruining their lives, ruining their 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 bank accounts ruining their families so this is what these things do and they're they're predatory in the way they get they, they organize these internal family dynamics that get people to no 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 it's it's fine i'll teach you how to do it i'll show you we're like you know we're friends we're sisters etc etc <laughs> and it works very much the same way in fascist cults and conspiracy theory cults and stuff like that these things all work in a very similar abusive um pyramidal structured way yeah. and it's you know we were talking about like the 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 worlds within worlds the houses within houses mm -hmm. you can see it all and like in a like in a like in a specimen jar yeah. inside the yeah, nuclear yeah. family when it goes wrong wow this is fun i mean this film is fantastic isn't it i mean like it, it is one of the most brilliant texts and yet i mean because you're you're plugged into this a, a bit more than than i am george and um <laughs> one of the things i'm uh just doing a little bit of a reading around Mm. I, I didn't realize quite just how because I, I, I like you I think this film is is really extraordinary and Jack I also love Midsummer, and yet mm -hmm. the, um, the 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 reaction to them and Astor's 
amongst horror film community seems to be really negative. Now, what, what's the it's, deal there? Why are these films uh, so loathed by I, a section of horror fandom? There is a thing within certain horror communities where there is a, a sort of conservatism that happens. There is this distinction right. between what is called like literary horror and pulp horror. Yeah. And I think there is this kind of there is often this kind of reverse snobbery that happens where if something is considered to be too highbrow, ah, it's not real horror. It's not real. Right. It's, it's not, it doesn't conform, you know? And it's I think one of the extraordinary things that I kept seeing commented and I was like chuckling away to myself was the, that there was a consensus in certain, and you know, I'm, I'm sort of blindly working my way through because mm -hmm. that it, 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 it's not a world I know terribly well, but mm -hmm. just the, well, they're not, fr they're not scary. And and that that's the primary thing. Yeah. I'm thinking you don't find hereditary I mean, scary. You don't I, I find don't know it's what to say terrifying. To that. <laughs> I don't it's like, know. Whoa! Wow! I think part of the problem. That, I mean, you could get terribly snobbish about this and say, well, part of the problem is literalism, which is yeah. people are reading this as a haunted house story in the vein of The Conjuring or Sinister or whatever, okay. and they are yeah. making a category error when they do that. Because they're not I mean, going to get what operates they're more get. like Fire Walk with me in a sense. Exactly. That, that, that exactly. we're talking Very about. So, yeah. We're not. We're not losing the uncanny. We're not. That it's not doing that rather tedious substitution where it's like, well, all this is really about, all this really is about mental health. Right. It, it is using those things to, uh, to explore. But it's not right. saying they're not there. Now that 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 ticks every box for me because I don't like yes. the. That anything that that tries to substitute which because it, it always feels a bit like haha you thought it you does, were into a ghost it? story and especially but you're not. This is when it's and that's pretentious right? i find that pretentious yeah that is whereas i find things like hereditary but, and fire walk with me far oh, more potent because they don't they don't disregard right. uh, the uncanny or the supernatural or or anything that's very much part or, or the mythological or that's very much part of what they're they're doing but they are also stand-ins for very very real very lived um uh experiences uh yeah. but i was just really you know quite yeah quite sure that well i don't know this community terribly well i mean i i i, I love horror yeah. that thing but it's but i'm yeah it, i've got my particular um relationship with it but I, but I was quite surprised because I sort of went thinking well I imagine these films they 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 are they're very serious endeavors and they're they're <laughs> very beautiful looking films as well midsummer and oh he must be kind of, and I was like wow Ari Aster seems to be yeah. a byword for like, mm. for like crappy horror as far as I mean, this is <laughs> like, this wow. is not I mean this is not particular to like horror communities or horror audiences or and whatever, I know there are know, like anything it's not a, monolith. It's not a monolith no no yeah. I mean and there are particular very vocal subgroups within those communities that do have a problem with what is considered to be quote unquote literary horror which is horror they consider to be pretentious or highbrow or whatever which doesn't conform to and frankly, I mean, I'm, I'm asking you this, but I kind of get it. I mean, as someone who, yeah. as a you know, a kid and a teenager and growing up, who was uh, into classic Doctor Who, and Jack will probably back me up here, mm -hmm. I sort of had the similar, like, um, what, what the hell, the the WTF? I don't get it. Why, why are people talking? This won't mean anything to you, George. So I apologise. Okay. Why is everyone talking about the seeds of doom and the web of fear and earth shock when enlightenment's over there, and they'd never talk about that? Or mm. ghost lights there, and they never talk about that. Or uh, warriors' gates over there, and they never talk about that. And it's—I mean, Jack, you're probably getting what I mean more than George. But you know, yeah, you, yeah. When you're part of a community. You go, <laughs> yeah. Why, why are you all pointing at those? They're effectively crap. Mm -hmm. But they have, a, a, yeah. It's like that kind of. A, there's a certain thing about. There's there is a certain. Yeah. There's there's always going to be a layer, I think, with any sort of fan group or or. In, in, interest group around certain types of genre of literature or, or, or cinema or, or there's always going to be a i suspect a lot of people who are into horror i suspect probably most people who are into horror um even in the sense of like people who would say yeah i'm a horror fan i'm i'm a, I'm a horror hound or whatever 
Mm. Most of them probably appreciate hereditary. I would say yeah, the, the ones they're probably, it's it's the silent majority, isn't it? I <laughs> suspect you have a noisy minority somewhere in the that's middle it. who are that's exactly. Who are of course, I went looking on the internet, so I was bound that. to find hereditary <laughs> is very well thought of generally in the horror community. As Great. is the witch, you know, they're they're both very very well thought of. Midsummer too. I mean, I think Midsummer is more contentious because of how stylized it is, and because of the fact that it is so specifically folk horror. You know, you either like folk horror or you don't. And if you don't, yeah. you're not going to like Midsummer because it is like the it's 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 the ur text, isn't it? It's like it's like folk it's, horror crystallized everything about it, just like thrown like, in your face. You, you can say a lot about hereditary, and people do. People say that it's pretentious, and and mm -hmm. but you can't say that it's boring. You know, it comes no. out that there's always something yeah. happening, and and some. And Midsummer was, is a very slow burn, yeah, isn't it? It's yeah. gradual it is, and slow. That, that, that's, that, you know, that, and I think Midsummer a lot of people have both have the same uh, issue, which is there's a tendency to flatten out what the endings mean because they don't yes. mean what a lot of people have have believed them to mean. They're, they're, they're not, they're not that big. simple. I mean, they're not yeah. these great emancipatory tracts about, ah, oh, well, you see, the woman got there oh, in the end. Is God, it, no, no, that's not what those films are about. That's not what Midsummer is about. <laughs> and it's not that what The Witch is, is not about. what Midsummer is about. It's, not witch, the, no. it's definitely not what The Witch is about. That's not some great positive ending, at, no. at, 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 at The Witch. But they've, they've kind of been packaged like up like that sometimes in yeah. the critiques about them. Uh, uh, either for for <laughs> incels to moan like oh, women, or uh, or just go oh well you know it's like no the, or even to celebrate them but it's like I, mean, I, I don't think they're what you think they are I think, I, <laughs> I think I do you can make people, a case that, that do payment is not who haven't who disliked hereditary because of that very quality that we spoke about the perspective shifts right um I do know people who found the the, the the quite stark shift in perspective that certainly happens in this film in like the third act yeah quite difficult okay quite difficult to take and i kind it of was, get that because that's yeah. a stylistic thing you know that's a stylistic thing if you don't like that if that jars with you then you're not going to enjoy it are you that's fine i kind of get that do you mean the, 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 the character who seems to be the focal character the most interesting engaging character is killed less than halfway through the movie yes. and you spend the rest of the movie without her that yes that upset that sort of thing upsets people it upsets yeah. because yeah. people bond to characters they get very invested yeah. in characters very very easily and you do get very invested in charlie charlie is strange and yeah. and mystifying and alien alienating in many respects but you you do get invested in her. It's one of the reasons Millie Shapiro's performance is so great. You 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 really do. You get you really do yeah. bound up with Charlie, but and she's I, removed I don't think from I, the narrative. Yeah, under yeah. halfway through, and you spend yeah. the rest of the film without her, and that is that is alienating to people. people and it's are a like, real, oh, it's, well, it? no. it's it's a real yeah. shock when you don't know what's going to happen, and when you well, see the first, it for the first time I saw it. I mean, I've never. I I the, I could probably. I can't remember the last time that I I. Uh, I actually shot bolt up right in my chair and I can even say I can even let you know what I said because as it because I told you guys I was going to watch it finally because this was <laughs> and I I grabbed the arms of the chair and I sort of hauled myself out of the chair as it happened and I said shit the bed like that yeah. um yeah. because I just could not believe that 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 uh, that that rupture of uh, yeah. of of the narrative of that character was so, wow yeah the neighbors must have shouted what no. was going on. They when must, yeah, yeah. They must have wondered what was going on because I shrieked. I was, I, I leapt up, paused the film, was like, no, no, no you know, shouting yeah. at the screen ridiculously. And then a little bit of time goes by. You get the amazing sequence where he just goes home in a complete <gasps> daze, and that, that. I mean, this is the worst. There is this an is the worst bit of the film realism we, to that. Yeah. Him yeah. just going off we, to bed and waiting. We've all morning. experienced that horrifying cold moment where the realization of something settles on you yes. the world is never going to be the same my yes. life is never going to be the same there is this moment and then there is the rest of my life and that's it i, I can't go yeah. back i can't change it it's done Again. the future is yeah. worse and it's going to be yeah. dreadful and i'm going to I mean, we've all to us to an extent we've all experienced that not most of us, I hope, on that level, yeah. but we all know what that's like. And then we can empathize with him. We can extrapolate that feeling yeah. to, a, to a thousandfold. So that moment, that, that bit of the film where he has to drive home and go to bed and he just sits there, 
it's it's so it's torturous it's it absolutely torturous. Torturous. and then the it's film you get you get a little bit of incident a little bit of incident and then that absolutely brutal yeah. merciless cut straight back to the road in broad daylight and charlie's yeah. severed head with the ants crawling all over yes, my yes. I, I remember the first time i watched it i just went oh no 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 yeah. like that mm-hmm. yeah it, yeah and That's the realization it, this, later in the this movie, may be when another this film might be too strong for a lot of people strange. in the exactly. horror community. Yeah. Exactly, because that. let's face it, a lot of people that are into horror are into horror because it's it's just fun it's and comforting. It's yeah, it's like yeah. a soft, it's That's like a beanbag. You know, yes. you watch the the third. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street or the fourth yeah. Friday yeah. the thirteenth or whatever and it's just and that's I'm not I'm not saying that's wrong. I do stuff no, like that as well. Not, but not there are a lot of people who you know this film is is not like that. This you don't this watch this something. for comfort. I mean, it's relentlessly you know, needling and upsetting. Yeah. Not yeah. to get too self promotional about it, but this is something I run up against all the time. Because the, the stories I write, the horror I write is not that. It is so it is so out there, it's so strange, it's so unusual. That often, like the, the the negative reviews that I've gotten are things like it's too abstract for me. It's not, it's not what I conceive of as horror. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I get, I guess, yeah. I mean, that's uh, what Jack just said. It, it, it really makes sense to me now because when I when I make the comparison with other fandoms uh, and things that I know more yeah. about, uh, more yeah. about. Yes, that there is, uh, and I, and I, oh, I like that don't, one where I they, they do... fire the laser guns at the Cybermen. Yeah, I like that I one because it's I fun. It reminds dis- me of being six or whatever. Yeah. You know, and the, I don't the, the disregard ones that, that, ones that because... we like are a bit more. <laughs> yeah. And I don't disregard that because there is also, that's not completely alien to me either. I mean, I've got a, I've I'm got sure a love of the cozy, you know, yeah. No, no, so I, I like it uh, to, to, to go. Oh, I like watching that thing I watched a hundred times because it's that thing I watched a hundred times. However, at the same time, it's um, I, I, the, the ire that is sometimes directed at things that mm. break out of that mold. Yeah, it just it just seems so uh, so much. But the, the, but just just to just attack on the end of that point you were making about the um, the sequence um, from uh, Charlie. Uh, through Peter uh, going to bed, it's also the absolutely. I mean, it's the, the harrowing decision, and I wonder actually if this decision came from Tony Collette rather than Ariasta. I do wonder. Is when she is in the throes of her grief, mm. it's shot like she's giving birth. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's so harrowing to watch. Oh. It's so harrowing to watch, and then it leads into something that I think Jack mentioned in our text chat. Which is, in a sense, that, that that scene is symbolic of rebirthing Charlie as yeah. as as the thing, the thing, as the person she was not treated as in life. Exactly. Because suddenly, I, the whole yeah. perspective suddenly, from Annie to Charlie is it like changes. Which, right? of course, that is so. Familiar. She's sanctified. She becomes yeah. like a Annie. saintly golden child, which she absolutely was not in Annie's purview when she was alive. Annie loves and cares happened. about Charlie a hell of a lot more once Charlie's gone than she once did when Charlie's Charlie was gone. actually there. As an abstract, when she can't, when she can be controlled in her head, when she becomes part of her narrative of identity, right? As a parent, because yeah. she can't, when she, she challenge can't under- exactly. When she, she can't, can't undermine be it, seen then, as any you? kind of reproach to Annie. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the commentary that this film has about parents and about it's really dark. It's really, it's I mean, that's another reason why people yeah. don't probably don't like it, to be honest, because it points the finger. It points the finger. It really says to parents, you know what? You need to consider why you had children and what they mean yeah. to you. What but is at the, the same intention? time? It, it, it shows you that Annie is the victim of her past as well as yes. the victimizers of her, of her children. You know, she, yeah. she is both at once. She is absolutely both well she says it right she she is she is a woman within a patriarchal system who fell pregnant when she didn't want to have children right yeah she makes that absolutely plain she did not want to have children but because of the system she operates in because of the culture she operates in she had she had to have them anyway right it's amazing as well i mean it's amazing when you are in a heteronormative relationship which then you know moves towards it i mean that's what i'm in that Mm -hmm. for a long time either explicitly or implicitly subtly or gratuitously the 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 question about children all the time Mm -hmm. i when when, uh, and of course we didn't 
we we right. we chose not to, mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't really until we hit a certain age where they were yeah they're not going to, um, but the 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 pressure is there. Yeah. Um, and women, you're on women the more time. than men. And oh, yes, women certainly. Get it all yeah. the blood time from their fucking parents. You know, when all are you going to give us grandchildren? Uh, fuck you! If you want another child, fucking have yeah. one. All the you know? way <laughs> they're characterised in a in a in a very reductive fashion. So, like Vicky would have had. Oh well, Vicky's interested in her career. That's not the fucking reason. That's that's not that's your explanation for it because you 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 oh you my want god this to you know fit. what's worse if you're a child if you are a childless woman who has pets oh they're your children <laughs> are no it's yeah, a fucking that. dog <laughs> it's not a child <laughs> although we are guilty of perhaps treating our children. No. <laughs> pets <laughs> like children <Honestly. laughs> no we treat them too well <laughs> going by <laughs> how hereditary works but yeah it's um. I mean, you know, this, people, but it's that. But again, it's it, it's expectation and it's a yeah. easy kind of cartoon characterization to say you have no idea how our relationship works, or even whether it works as a heteronormative relationship. You see the framework of a heteronormative yeah. relationship, but you have no idea about the details of our relationship or how it operates. Get lost. <laughs> God knows how much surplus excess needless avoidable suffering is caused in this world because so many people have children that they don't really want don't really don't because really they're, they're pressured into it or yeah. they feel that they should or yeah. you know just don't i've literally don't heard don't the, have them the phrase it's, we uh, have this child to save our marriage yeah it's like you brought another human what? being to save a marriage Created. that was going wrong consciousness what? and and of course yeah. save a marriage those marriages end up breaking up and yeah. then there's another kid who's collateral damage yeah yeah yeah, yeah. wow yeah. but yeah they used to hear that. there used to be a um there used to be a right-wing trope didn't there about um teenage girls having babies in order to get council houses and i always okay. used to think yeah. well at least she's got a reason at least there's a reason yeah. at least there's that's a, actually yeah. a pretty good that's rationale actually, a practical, actually i mean it, the whole thing was bullshit obviously but you know yeah. Yeah. at least in your hy- hypothetical scenario she's got a reason to have one mm. yeah. so many people seem to just have it's them because just well, that's what you do isn't it it's what isn't you that do? just what you when do? the biological imperatives kick in no. very little rationalizing <laughs> exactly that because it's yeah from but the I outside, did someone did say from, something to me recently yeah. though and i thought well okay yeah that's interesting because it's, uh, uh, something came up about children and that people that we knew were having children and obviously i'm not going to poo poo them having children to their face what, what awful thing to do um but you know <laughs> you, you couldn't help but thinking you couldn't help but think wow you know this is such an odd time to be living in you know it's it's so precarious and and, and so on but, but on a number of fronts um i wonder if there is ever a part of a uh you know a, a, a soon-to-be parent that thinks how far is my child gonna get yeah you know um and someone to say well you kind of gotta gotta keep filling the, the world with children um uh for, for there to be anything at all and the alternative is kind of all but kind of worse and i thought okay fair yeah. enough yeah it's oblivion it? it's oblivion it's like and saying and? i'm, <laughs> I'm not going to have children or or people shouldn't have children because you know the future looks bad because of climate change or whatever that's just giving up isn't it yeah. but if if you're going to not give up and have children you do then have to do something you about have to have some, do something. and you also have exactly to be i think that. you have to be conscious of the fact that um you know i don't know it's it's very possible that we, we you know we i don't it, 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 it's all pie in the sky but it's, you know that the idea of of, uh, of a generation living to its barring accidents or, or diseases its full quota of years mm-hmm. it, you know that becomes less imaginable with each successive generation mm-hmm. just because of where we are historically yeah 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 um, but hmm yeah, <laughs> I mean, within the thesis of this film, I mean, it's amazing. I love the fact that it asks those questions, that it mm. looks directly at parents and asks, why did you have children? Why did you have me? Peter asks that. Mm. Yeah. Peter asks that. 
why did you have me? And it's such a brilliant question because it's something that, as Jack said, many parents are just not given to consider. No. They're not given to consider because the answer's probably quite dark. You know, they have to acknowledge, you have to acknowledge as a parent, being a parent is innately selfish. It's innately selfish. Why do people have children? If they think about it, why do people have children? It's either, it's either arbitrary or it's because it fulfills something for them, right? That's always the yeah. case. That's universally yeah. the case because children aren't part of the contract. They can't say, oh yeah, I think I'd like to be born. Here's, here's my signature on that, it's you know? Fine. It, and children are such a, a disappointment as well because they end up being their own selves. Exactly. Right. Those pesky children. Isn't that awful? Who are not, who are not little <laughs> they're not, dolls. They're, they're not following play. the plan. <laughs> exactly. Who are not little dolls that we can play with and manipulate and shape and change, who are actually their own entities and agencies. How dare they? It's just a purely objective and, unless the we, accident, for God's sake. Yeah. Unless we do have those kinds of grotesquely abusive family dynamics where people do actively yeah. and malevolently control each other in the way yeah. that people, um, in the way certainly that the older generation are doing to, to Annie onwards in this yeah. film. Exactly. Um, that. The sheer vanity as well of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the parent project in which some parents want their, their, their offspring to be, to, to absolutely reflect their own values and aspirations mm -hmm. and, Wow, that's right. It's yes, vanity with Queen, such a Queen Lee, B. Queen it's Lee exactly is prepared to actually sort of hollow out her children's, yep. and then it doesn't work with the son. He kills himself because uh, whatever. And so she has to skip to the next generation. Mm -hmm. She's prepared to actually hollow out their souls yeah. in order to yep. get them to be what she. That wants young man them to be. wasn't a schizophrenic. No. No, 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 he just knew yeah, what was uh, going it's... on, and he was terrified. Yeah, I don't want to be King Payman. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. she's prepared to actually have their conspire to have their souls removed so that they will be what she wants them to be. And she thinks it's for their own good. That that letter that she leaves for Annie where she says, oh, my darling, beautiful daughter, forgive yeah. me for everything. I'm yeah. so sorry. Try, mm -hmm. you know, try not to hate me for your, but it's, it's going to be fine. What we gain will outweigh all our losses. Mm. Yeah. What we gain. Yeah, it's what we gain. What I, it's the royal we, isn't it? It's what I gain. Exactly. Ultimately. Yeah. yeah. What's good yeah. for everyone is good for me because I'm a narcissist, right? And That's what right. this seems see. to say is my you entire. See, I was right all along. Yeah, my entire generation are narcissists. What's good is good for us on a material level. It's our comfort. That's what matters. That's why it, ultimately, that's why it's that's why it's a QAnon movie because it's the fucking yeah. boomers again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's so it's, it's that so comfortable, endlessly greedy generation <sighs> that were never, you know, they they had it handed to them, but they want more. They want more yeah. and more and more. And and the you know, obviously, we're talking about a certain segment. We're talking about the white middle yeah. class version of the yes, boomers. Yes. You know, and the first time anybody says no to them, it's it's a it's this vast cosmic conspiracy yeah. against them. Yeah. Had so they have to organize their own conspiracy against that in return. Everything to the, to the subsequent generations. It's like yeah, what? yeah. and then yeah. blaming them once they can't, once they don't have it. It's like yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> the wow. benefits you had, you know, post-war consensus, everything. I mean, the the, the final salary pensions, the lot, and mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, owning your own homes. We haven't got any of it. You know? None of I mean, that trickled that, down. That commentary, that commentary is absolutely, it's explicit in this film. It's explicit. Really? I mean, I, I find it difficult not to see it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, with, with, with a bit of a stretch, I mean, I'm not saying this was the authorial intention, and I'm not saying you can map it on directly, but this movie is absolutely about MAGA and QAnon and all this stuff. It is about the... the, yeah. the um, the boomer reactionary cult movement. Even well, the way about, it, you know, it's, it's kind of a status quo, isn't it? it it's it's like, it, it's yeah. cutesy and homespun, and yet all it wants to do is inv invoke the rapture. You know, it's yeah, rather yeah. like the way they, yeah. they sort of... It's all couched in terms of beauty and glory and spirituality, but ultimately when you get down to it, it's all, it's grubby and venal. It's, it's all about money and, and power. Venal. Yeah. And I mean, you've delved into this. You've looked at what they actually believe. I mean, these morons talk about like how, what cars they're going to have in heaven and what houses they're going to have. And it's like, 
Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Are you well, fucking they, kidding me? You don't do think of Earth. like you don't think in terms of transcendence even. You don't think in mythological terms. You think in these squalid yeah. materialist terms. You'd think if there was gonna be like a even if like there is this situation where you, you are willing to sacrifice your children and grandchildren to usher in some sort of metaphysical revolution or renaissance you think it would be like a <laughs> transcendence at least yeah. wouldn't you well, there's great right awakening you know when when Q and President fences. Trump finally <laughs> defeat the deep state and everything, the, the the great thing they're looking forward to is their grandchildren have to come groveling back and say, yes, you were right all along. I'm sorry I ghosted you on Facebook. And That's all the people it. that they hate will be hanged. Hillary Clinton will be hanged, etc. And President Trump will press the button on the Resolute Desk that revalues the Iraqi dinar and the gold and the <laughs> cryptocurrency that they all bought because they saw the adverts for buy gold down the side of every fucking speech that trump gives and yeah. suddenly they'll all be millionaires that is their millennium that's that what is, that's, that's that's heaven their, that's the day of judgment and the, and the and the, the kingdom of heaven as far as these people are concerned I, I, and he's great for them because of course he's almost like a vice figure he 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 he, he can just take every he, they can project every sin that mm -hmm. they don't want he does it for them yeah he does it for he can be something. I mean, he's not. We, they know he's not genuinely interested in uh, in, uh, in 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 their faith. He mm -hmm. he 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 courts a he courts a little bit around election time. But he is he he can do the things that they don't want to get their hands dirty on. Mm -hmm. Whether that's acting against the the kinds of people they don't like, which basically keeps them in the game. So it does. You know, it's just the the thing that you that that, that drives one mad. Say, well, what is what is it that Trump can do that will turn these people up? Nothing, because it, there's a tacit agreement about what he will do with power. The, so it's the, fine. The They've they already hate. squared that. They, they, yes, exactly. <laughs> They've already squared that. You know, that's not a problem because he's doing it directly. He'll get his hands dirty. He'll take all the sins on himself and everyone else is left clean and respectable. Um, but, you know, the blacks and the Jewish people, uh, you know, black people and Jewish people, they'll... Uh, and they won't be so much of a problem. Trans the people, the LGBT the, people, yeah. the Mexicans. Well, yeah, they'll all be know. put back in their box and yeah. suddenly yeah. the economy will be quote-unquote fair again yeah. and politics mm -hmm. will be fair again and, and the rules will suddenly be abided by again. The rules <laughs> of the game being those those rules that benefit me. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly yeah. everybody will play the game the way I think it's supposed to be played. Because they'll be forced just a, to. Because if they don't, they'll be in a fucking camp. Peter's just, just a little bit too young and good looking to be famous, honestly, really. <laughs> He's, He's the wrong guy. guy. That's it. That's <laughs> it, right? But it's all in this film, isn't it? It's all yeah. in this film. That's what they're doing at the end. They are just restoring the status quo in which they're yeah. comfortable. Yeah. That's it. She says, Joan, at the end, you know, she lists the thing before they've even got done settling him to his new body. She's saying, we've brought, we've called you in from the, the north or whatever it is, a great payment. And... Here's the list of things we want you to give us. Yes, by the way, it's almost here's the first our shop thing barely in his new body. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's all like it is all we want comfort. We want we want to be comfortable. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's what yeah, heaven yeah. is to them. Yeah, it's why do you give hence heaven? How I, dumb. I, the paucity <laughs> of imagination. When yeah. you know there's metaphysics, when you know there are princes of hell, when you know there are spirits and demons and magic. It's like fucking hell. Then what, Jesus. What, what, what is what is politics is magic to these people. That's yeah. that's that's how they yeah. experience politics. They experience politics as saying magic words yeah. and waving a magic wand and performing magic rituals like wearing the correct magical garb, the red hat or whatever, or the or <laughs> the uh, the maga cloak or the the stars and stripes cloak or whatever and saying the right ritual words over and over again and listening to the magus up on the stage saying the same ritual words over and over and over again and then you make your little sacrifice your little payment literally in payment yeah. uh, you know to, to yeah. the to the trump fund or whatever and in return <laughs> for, the, for your little sacrifices and your observations of all the magical rituals you will get in return that which you want you will be served <laughs> back magically that the world that, that that you think you once had and that you think you've lost and that you think you're yeah. owed and that you think you're entitled to it will be given back unto you. That's that's yeah. what politics is to these people. It's a magical ritual whereby they they hope to gain magical uh, benefits. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolute. And even I mean, even within that, you get this. I love the fact that this film muddies it 
So in the in the performance uh, that that uh, the actor who plays Peter gives at the very end, it's like he's confused. He, he's getting all of these like, "Who are you, people? Yeah, yeah. yeah what's <laughs> going on? Like, what is this? Can I? I mean, this within my power? I I don't know. Do I want to give this to you? I don't know. I'm not even sure that I can. Or have you just committed this for no reason whatsoever? Am I going to be the Paimon that you want? I think there's a, there's a way to read this movie where Payman is kind of a victim. He's not the yeah. he's not the prime. We don't know that Payman ever actually does anything. We don't see oh. Payman do a thing. Payman is, in a sense, he is a doll being moved around inside the doll's house, just like everybody else in the in the okay. in, in the in the story. He's being he's been put into this body and then that body. And then he's being told you are payment. You're going to do this for us, et cetera, et cetera. We don't know what he thinks about anything. He might, and he might have, he might have no choice. He might be looking around yeah. thinking, well, I don't know what's happening. And I, I, I don't know what I can do about it. I just, you know, it, he's not really the villain. Uh, he's, he does he's, he's, a, he's trapped in this machine. Yeah. Sublimely without agency. Right. Yeah. And that's that's like um that's like shadwell trying to sell immaculata isn't it you know i've <laughs> it, i've captured much. this eldritch wonderful powerful brilliant <laughs> yeah. beautiful terrifying awesome entity and i'm going to mm-hmm. use it to make some money yeah that's exactly it that is uh, that is exactly it there you've got i mean that is barker's commentary on ab- what he considers to be absolute evil Mm-hmm. absolute evil if you look at car- yeah. like and what he's talking villains, about really is commodity fetishism yeah, he's talking exactly, about the reduction yeah. of everything to commodity exactly yeah. that exactly that he, he i mean he, he made the commentary once he, he made the commentary about disney he said that it's it's essentially the abuse of imagination to sell plastic and hamburgers and that's exactly it that's what he that's what he rails against more than anything it's that perversion of imagination the reduction of it to to commodification that's that's evil insofar as he's concerned and if you look at characters like Immacolata, for example Immacolata is a genocidal monster she she makes no bones about it she literally says at one point i want slow genocide she's a monster but my god does he have more sympathy for her as a mythological yeah. evil yeah. than cadwell who oh. has nothing Just redeeming grubby, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. That's rubbing and evil. grubby, and it's this film's evil Grabby. too. It's this film's the evil too. Evil Paimon. is the, the the ultimate evil is the petty bourgeois imagination. Exactly. Just drag everything exactly. down to my level to make yeah. it just commodity. That's it. And, uh, you take something as down like, to product level. epically mythological and poetic as Paimon, a prince of hell, mm. and you reduce it to a cash machine. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a Lexus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I I I can't fathom. I can't I like it's 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 alien. I can't get any traction on the imagination that works that way. I don't understand it. If you have access to that, then you change the world. You rip the world apart and you rewrite it. Yeah? That's what it's for. Yeah. That's what magic and miracles are for. Yeah. Otherwise, a hell of a lot of what this film is saying, I think, is that there is no rationale because people do it without thinking because people are yeah. trapped just inside these these structural dynamics that they don't, yeah. you know, they are just doing what they are set up to do. They are the figures being moved around inside the doll's yeah. house, you That's know, just it. in the same way that these horrible, abusive dynamics are taking place within the family without anybody meaning to. Annie doesn't mean to be a cruel mother. You know, Stephen doesn't mean to be a neglectful no. father or a neglect. You know, they, they don't mean to do these things, no, they don't. but they're doing them anyway without really knowing why. And I feel yeah. like you could, I mean, certainly if Joan is, is who I think she is, because I think Joan is Annie's sister or half sister um, that Annie never knew about. If you, if you, I mean, Anne Dowd is brilliant, but Anne Dowd looks a little bit like Tony Collette and she looks a little bit like the actress playing Queen Lee. And then you mm-hmm. get the stuff in the photo albums later on. Apparently Lee and Joan have known each other Joan's entire life. There's photographs of Mm -hmm. Lee at Joan's high school graduation and college graduation and stuff like this. It's an entire separate family or half family that Annie never knew she had. So it's still entirely within the family. And why is Joan doing any of this? Joan is probably doing it. She's she's the prime mover or the leader or whatever within the cult now that Lee's gone. Mm -hmm. She's doing it because she was Queen Lee's daughter and she was yeah. born to that role she was just that's put normal. into that role that's normal this that's, is happening. What, that's how things happen yeah. yeah 
Yeah. It's interesting this is happening the because end, uh, these people all have just this horizon that you, you cannot see past the horizon by definition. So the horizon yeah. that you are given is just the horizon you're stuck with. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I think the film ends up doing something that we criticized the original Exorcist movie for, for doing, but actually there's a point to it in, in this movie where at the very end, really what the, the, the implication is that by uh, evoking, uh, invoking uh, payment and payment's return that the the era of the testament is over that that suddenly everything that uh, everything has changed and yet you're left with the the sense that it's just still a bunch of people in a treehouse somewhere yeah. and actually the rest of the world is completely yeah. fine you do it's yeah. just their little private demon feel that um whereas the, the the movie is i mean from their perspective the movie is trying to set up this idea that in that moment at that return, everything changed, you know, the, uh, um, the, the, but nothing's changed. No, it's not, it's <laughs> the not like Damien Thorne, is it? This is not no, the Antichrist. This isn't the omen. No, I think, it, it's I think very parochial and baby, tiny. Right? And, yeah. yeah, but I think whereas the exorcist is kind of unaware of this because yeah, it, does, it sees yeah. the... The, the exorcist in it's, its an, very it's catholic failure, in its very really. orthodox yeah. catholic way it sees the just the defilement of the quote unquote innocence of this young girl it sees yeah. that as just the the absolute encapsulation of all cosmic evil you know it sees that as enough just by itself yeah, yeah. um it doesn't notice that it's being very local and small scale and and <laughs> kind of meaningless does. but i think this this film does i think it's part yeah, of the point does. i think that the, yeah. the, the narrow horizons of the evil here is part of the point it is you, you get that final shot and it's all contained within this little, little tree, yeah. room with an apex well, roof yeah, that's like yeah. a little house and it's that's, that's all it. it is it's just it's, in, it's just it's the, the evil camera. yeah it's in the camera work the camera pans out and you get that shot and around it's just dark it's black there's nothing else and you see that's inside right. the room that's the universe now right that yeah. tiny little space is what's left of the <laughs> that's game it. that's what's that's the, that's what's left of the whatever imaginary game is being played that's it because as We've explored the, 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 the mindset of, of, of this cult and what it taps into is small. It is parochial. It is self-serving. Bourgeois. It is bourgeois. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> ultimately hollow, ultimately empty, with yeah. this confused demon boy girl creature that, that doesn't seem to know what it is or what, what yeah. it's doing there. Yeah. Who's rendered even more, even more vulnerable and slightly pathetic by the violence that it did to itself earlier. It has the plaster across its face, of course. Yes. <laughs> it, it just, it, it's, it's it deliberately. It's gloriously absurd. pathetic, isn't it? It's gloriously it is. Pathetic it so is. To, yeah. With this little flimsy this, paper this crown film, and his broken it nose. Does, it does, you know, in the look of lesser creators, parts of this film would have been absurd. Like the, the sequence where you get the headless body floating up into the treehouse, it's actually really disturbing. Mm, but in e yeah. an inch, one way or the other, more, and it would have been ridiculous. It would have been so stupid. Well, I think yeah. even the like sequence, the, the naked and... people all around the house, it's yeah. just on the brink. It is, it is incredibly disturbing. But it's yeah. on the brink of being ridiculous, and it's disturbing because it's on the brink of being ridiculous. Well, I think it even, has just, um, it has uh, just this air of like, uh, I don't know. You know, middle class um, orgy about it, doesn't yes. it? Yeah. 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 in the bowl. Yeah, yeah it's something yeah, a little exactly. bit like you know, uh, uh, yeah, middle aged swingers party about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But also, I think even the sequence. I mean, it's a very effective sequence in, in many respects. But with Annie, um, you know, doing doing her Regan and crawling a, a, along the the ceilings, and then the, the sequence of the the head smash against the 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 attic door and things like that it's it's terrifying but it is within a notch of being daft yeah it's a notch yeah. away from being daft and but it holds it holds it it so works though doesn't it i mean mm. those sequences scare the shit out of me i, I just find and scare it. is the wrong word it's creepy there's something very unsettling about that and it's again, it's this whole yeah. thing with perspective. It's the fact that Annie is sort of blurred and just in the corner, or almost out of shot. And it's it. Ugh. Ah. I think the the, the callback as well. There's the there's the one, the one guy cult member, the one who when Charlie 
looked at her grandmother in the coffin, in the open mm. a casket, and turned around, and he had that peculiar grin, and he still got the same grin. peculiar grin at the end. Yeah. And and it's yeah. uh, it's just a little thread. You think, oh yeah. God, <laughs> I don't want to watch anymore. <laughs> yeah. and and in their, in you, their pose, you, you were sort of wondering at that point, what is Peter seeing? What am I seeing? Because it's dark yeah. and it's deliberately slightly obscure. What yeah. am I seeing it, there? Yeah. We've talked a little bit about some of the film's references. We, I mean, I, I said earlier, this film, I, I love it, but it does have some traces of like first novel syndrome where there's loads <laughs> shoved in. Another thing it has is that it wears its influences very much on the sleeve. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I like things that wear their influences on their sleeve. But we've mentioned some of the things there are there are visual echoes of Kubrick's The Shining. There are visual echoes of um, Suspiria with like lights yes. flying yeah. around indicating um, yeah. uncanny energy and so on and there are very definitely um echoes of david lynch with the with the way people are set in tableaus and yeah. and stood in in still uh, poses looking at each other and things like that that's very blue velvet and stuff like yes. that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but why not yeah. it works yeah why not yeah it's absolutely fine i mean it's one of those films where it's not uh it's not diluted by that it doesn't just become like a mishmash or a collage of references it still has very much its own identity and it's not copying it's yeah no. It's yeah, I mean, we're even the, the whole destiny free will thing, which you know it, it picks up from Halloween by having the same pretty much classroom scene with Laurie Strode. Yes, Peter, yeah. of course. You know. yes. Um, uh, yeah. Interesting that the because I think they're using Antigone as their reference mm-hmm. as well, which is almost seems like I thought that was really interesting to use Antigone because it was almost seemed like the the, the narrative that um, this up. Annie doesn't um, take, which is she doesn't. She doesn't. Um, the dead brother mm-hmm. is it, just yeah. a feature, but of course, in in Antigone, it is the linchpin, and it's like yeah. it, again, it shines a light somewhat on her insular and rather selfish side. It's like your brother killed himself yeah. to avoid all this, and you 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 are uh, you are you're not you're not going to in a sense you're not marking his death which of course is what Antigone is all about and the trouble that Antigone gets into uh, it's, it's the course that Annie doesn't take and it's it's almost like Antigone and negative so that's an interesting reference that they use there by going to Sophocles and, yeah. yeah I looked it's, this it's up the it's story actually, it doesn't it's, take um, is it not Antigone it's not. It's the women ah. of Trachis. It is ah, Sophocles. Ah, okay, right. And okay. Well, I was Sophocles going to say wrote the same play was, over and over yeah, again. So it's it's Sophocles. Sophocles. Yeah. I didn't so look it, it up, so I just assumed, ah, oh, it's Antigone. Right. Okay. <laughs> what the? <laughs> you you might as well. Much better research than I am. <laughs> yeah, he had basically. He's a, he's a bit. <laughs> He's a bit like the Greek tragedian uh, equivalent of Roy Lichtenstein, that the pop artist, he had the same thing and he did it again and again and again and again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, a, that's another point, actually. There is so much Greek tragedy in this story, isn't there? Yeah. Like the fa- oh, again, yeah. those family dynamics are very, very Greek tragedy and very Greek tragedy. And some of the more elaborate yeah. deaths are very Greek tragedy oh, yeah. in as well. Same ambiguity because we, we would just ripping on poor old sophocles a minute ago there but actually sophocles is quite ambiguous and and yes interesting on the question yeah. of free will versus predestination yeah. and yeah. so on. yeah um as is as is shakespeare when he adapts a similar scheme in in macbeth for instance mm-hmm. um, and i think this film too this film doesn't i i've read lots about this film and lots of people just say oh well it's tragic because these people are trapped in uh, like a machine uh, that they can't get out of and they can't do anything about it and they're destined and uh, yeah, I I don't agree with that. I don't think they are necessarily trapped. I think they have multiple uh, escape hatches, to, nah. to reuse a phrase that we used earlier. But I think the film is about the experience of, I mean, even down to people giggling, watching um, videos of guillotinings on their laptops. You know, that's that's a machine that you that you get trapped in and you can't escape from it and it chops your head off. Um, that's it's what it feels like. There are multiple... Mm moments where people could make different decisions yep. um yes. the, the the beheading of charlie for instance it's it's ambiguous how planned that is i mean you get the shot of the post that eventually takes her head off on the way to yeah. the party and it has the the pieman symbol on yes. it yeah. Um, yeah. that strongly indicates that there is a degree of um predestination at work here that there's a spell yeah. at work here or a plan at work here but at the same time 
it, Annie could just not do what she does. She could just exactly. not have that conversation where she manipulates Alex yeah. into take um, uh, Peter into taking Charlie with her and then manipulates. She could not do that. She there's nobody Absolutely. forcing her to do that except Absolutely. the force of her conditioning and her institutionalization within those unhealthy mm -hmm. dynamics that she was raised in. So it's not it's not one way or the other. It's just saying we are trapped within these things and at the same time we are free to not be trapped in them part of the part of annie's backstory is about her making a bid to free herself from it and succeeding for a while she she part of why they have to do all of this is because she manages to keep young peter away from her mother yeah. she yes. she does succeed in getting out of the machine for a long time <laughs> she gets pulled back in but you can still see multiple points at which she could get back out yeah. so it's it's not saying we are um, we are tra we are tragic because we are trapped in this inescapable destiny that we're born into. It's saying, it's saying men are born free, but not within circumstances yes. of their own choosing. That's what yeah. we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> but they do have the power to break <laughs> break out of their circumstances. It could be bloody difficult, but yes, it's there. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, I think, guys, I love, shall I love we how it has its cake close? and eat it. I, I love the way that it has both. It has the actual material, quote unquote, realist family dynamics and the, the realist dynamics of how cults operate and stuff like that. Yeah. And and even conspiracy to a certain degree. But it also has the supernatural thing. And they're both yes. on yeah. top of each other and they're working at the same time and they're complementing complementing each other. The supernatural aspect is not just dismissed. You're not yeah. allowed people. Um, I listened to a commentary on this at the over at the um, Esoterica YouTube channel with Dr. Justin mm -hmm. Sledge, who's brilliant, by the way. But we'll go and go and look at that channel if you're interested in in Esoterica. That's what the channel's called. And he talked with two occultists about this film. They did a commentary as they were watching it, and it was really interesting them talking about occultism and the the actual, um, uh, you know, from within that belief system. At least mm -hmm. the, the two guests. But one of the things they were saying, some the guests were saying towards the end that they don't like the end, or one of them doesn't like the end because it makes the actual magical supernatural aspect explicit. And he would have much preferred it if it had been left uh, readable as just pure right. sort of, you know, a folly adieu as a as a, yeah, yeah, as, yeah. a as a as a psychological. And I totally disagree with that. Yes, I, I, I love that the too, film sets too. the seal on it at the end. It says no. We are being specific and literal mm. about this. There is the literal supernatural happening here in narrative, because it doesn't disrespect the uncanny and the supernatural as a narrative way of expressing yeah. how these things exactly. feel that's yeah that's exactly. what i always I, say i do get it's, very it's the, irked it, by it that it gives else. you the yeah. material dynamics of these things but it also says and also it it it, it bleeds into this other thing which is the yeah. it, it's the somatic and emotional expression of how it feels to be trapped within these systems yes it's the abstract it, it, isn't it, it? It's, it's our operation yeah. in the abstract and also rather as that uh, with firewalk this film me, is like the, this, this film is, is the, like for me it's like the perfect balance this film strikes the perfect balance yes. between the two things but it yeah. also rather like firewalk with me i think it exemplifies how actually this is often the best way to express those things Definitely, rather than yeah. pulling it away yeah. from us pulling the rug away from us actually th th this gets closer to something that is genuine experience no matter how uh, much it riffs on the uncanny or the strange or the, yeah. the supernatural it it gets it just takes us closer because for things that we've discussed many times before about the ideology of realism and how it stymies it it, it, it reduces mm -hmm. it it doesn't get us in fact it gets us further away yeah um yeah. And, and so yeah that so that that pleases me as well that that me this too. this, this I, has the I ending it has. realism can be this. like yeah, realism can be great, but it can also be like that syndrome that Annie's in where when she's making the model of the bedroom, she mm -hmm. puts the little words on the wall because the words are on yeah. the wall and she doesn't think about the why they're there. She just reps yeah, it. Yeah. She's giving a quote, un, a quote, neutral view of the accident. Well, of course, that's, that's not a neutral view of the accident. Of course, exactly how can it be? be neutral? How can it be possibly be neutral? How can it possibly be neutral? You know it's not from her language before. You know, when when um, Stephen berates her for it, when he says, uh, what do you think Peter will will think about when if he sees this? And she says, this isn't about him. There's something about Tony Collette's performance there when she says him. It's so venomous. Yeah. Mm. It's so yeah. dismissive. Mm -hmm. Who and it's like, about? It's, it's, it's also a confession. Him. It's also a confession, yeah. isn't it? It's like, yes, it is about him. 
Yes, it is. <laughs> but also for her, it's it's not about him. It's about her entire artistic project is this weird, creepy sort of taking the world that as she sees it and turning it into this formally faithfully realistic, but completely weird and creepy yeah. and uncanny sort of miniaturized controlled yeah. um, cameo version where she even makes a model of the exhibition hall where her models are going to be displayed including yeah. little models of her models displayed within the model exhibition hall yeah. Yeah. everything has to be miniaturized down shrunk down and it's all completely faithful to the realism but at the same time it's this grotesque um sanitization and um of, of everything real it's it's the sucking out of it of all actual yeah. life all independent life because she has to control it Re yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a great it's a great metaphor for how realism can be an ideology that distorts in fact yeah, it reminded yeah. me awfully of um the philip seymour hoffman film um synecdoche new york i don't know if either of you've seen synecdoche new york i have seen synecdoche. Um, i mean you've got him uh creating uh, a facsimile uh, of new york for a theatrical piece which then no one knows the difference between <laughs> the synecdoche and the action and but oh, his part that's like the borges story the man yes, that makes the map uh, that's so realistic yes, that it yeah, just sits it. on yeah. Uh, yeah and then the the inverse of that is his partner who he's estranged from who starts making everything in miniature a la annie mm -hmm. And that's her form. And actually, then you realize as the film develops that these are both expressions of control. His is mm -hmm. control because he's he's terminally ill and you know yeah. he's had a, a breakdown in all his relationships. And hers is because she's starting her life again. But it's interesting how she does everything in miniature too. And it is this sort of exercise in control and, and uh, regression. Well, I, 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 do, I make a model of the thing that I made the model of and put the model in that model and, and, and so on and so forth. Although at the same time, for all of that, that. one of the things that i found really telling about those sequences in um annie's studio she wasn't allowed a private space mm. and the amount of times the door would open and someone would be like yeah. where's my this and that or what are you doing why are you doing that and it's like it was it, it was also again tapping into that you know she is working yeah. Um, yeah. She can't leave yeah. to go to a studio because she's also a mother, and a, mm -hmm. and and you know she has to perform certain functions and everything. But her her studio is not sacrosanct. No, it isn't. I mean, even Paimon it, invades it at one yeah. point. Doesn't you actually, it's just it's the, the one time really, you actually see Paimon. It's upsetting because it's like you know Steve just wanders in and you yeah. like, hey, that you know, d d d does she do this at your office? But again, yeah. it's because she's in the home and it's like, and she's yeah, not allowed to be that them. thing. You know, she's not allowed to be, she's not allowed to be a separate entity. But that's the abuse that's been done to her. She's it's never a, allowed to be. It's all on display, isn't it? Her interior world is it's is to be displayed. It's to displayed to her family of. and it's displayed yeah. Yeah. to the public as well. Her 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 literal job is to just make her interior world visible to the entire world to judge. Oh. Um, yeah, we can we can criticize how she represents things, for instance, in the model of the accident, but at the same time, she does have a right to yes. to have her yes. interior world. Except that she, her, she has no privacy with her. Steve gets to look, walk in, and check it out, and, and tell her that he doesn't like it. Yeah. Well, it's I even double. I so mean, I Steve, think uh, if, if you take the reading that he is her ex psychiatrist, it's it's even oh, more it's terrible. Absurd, I isn't mean, it? It, you know, it's really bad because yeah. he should know better. Yeah. He but, should know I better, mean, right? He, he, even even regarding, the, I think the critique you can make of her response about the, you know, how it's not objective what she's doing, the fact that she's got to be in a position to justify it. To yeah, someone who's yeah. just come wandering into a work right. in progress, which really, you know, we, we, we we've all been there. I mean, mm. um, y y y even as an actor, where I, obviously that's that's my creative background. I mean, you you guys write, um, mm -hmm. but there's a portion before I share it with other actors and a director. There's a lot of homework done first, and no, you you no one wanders in and. You know, I, it, it's so exposing. <laughs> you know, it's rather like yeah. um, asking. Yeah. To, but it was rather like looking over your shoulders while you're writing. I mean, yeah. I, I just wouldn't do it. <laughs> I bear your mind again. She's been doubly bereaved. She's lost yeah. her mother and her daughter in quick succession. Yeah, yeah. 
So, so it's always that thing. Oh, well, of, I mean, I know she. I mean, we, I, I think we've explored quite uh, uh, well. I, I mean, uh, the, the kind of person she is. But it, you know, there is this caveat that I, you know, I still feel this huge amount of sympathy for her. Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. that's Sympathy why the film's so great all. because it, yeah. it's, 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 n- nobody is a nobody is a, a villain here, despite no, everybody's no. frailties and and the terrible things that that they do or some yeah, of them they do. do no, terrible things. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's ironically, the, 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 or wicked here. It's ironically Charlie, who you know, it is theorised is nothing but, and and I know we've uh, uh, we, we we don't really fully go along. This certainly I don't, but actually she's the only one who doesn't <laughs> hurt anyone. Right. In, in, yeah. in, in the movie and yet she's meant to be you know ostensibly the locus yeah, of evil she is evil. payment you know yes, yeah. it's like she's, 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 she doesn't hurt anyone doesn't and again I think anyone. that actually why it taps into what you said Jack about losing her at the point we do is genuinely upsetting because actually she is the yeah. character that doesn't seem to cause anyone any problems really they're all <laughs> everyone else causes each other problems mm-hmm. and she mm-hmm. doesn't it seems to be the other way around for Charlie, doesn't it? And yeah. that's it's largely because she she is this neurodivergent character operating in a world that doesn't accommodate her. Mm. It's always yeah. imposition upon her, harm being done to her. I think there is yeah. also perhaps something, just going back to what we were saying earlier, that much earlier, might be slightly uncomfortable about the whole way that um, Charlie is framed, even in the way the film is packaged. Because, you know, looking at the... Um, the poster art and everything. I mean, there's Tony Collette and and there's Hel- uh, and there's uh, Ellie Shapiro and um, Billy Shapiro and uh, they are and you have the word hereditary and everything seems to be predicated on the idea this is a this is a mother and daughter situation and therefore the the, the daughter is going to be absolutely pivotal. So there mm-hmm. is a sense of we are played a bit. Yeah, I, I suppose we so. Are, you I know, we are we are manipulated as well. But then, then you can say that that is a further expression of the levels of manipulation. They even bleed through. Yeah, the absolutely. narrative. And also, and, that's what films do. I know, but, but I know, I, I, I realize, but it's, a, it's again, it's one of those very interesting fine lines, isn't it? Because yeah. um, it, it's about the um, uh, how far you set the dial. Because right, I mean, right. so, you know, it's like you, you, uh, what we're I think some like, there probably get, <laughs> would be like incidental like music action. deception here. Yeah, people can get very ang- like annoyed oh, by how it. incidental oh. music plays out if it's over pointing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yet, actually, all incidental music does that to some degree. But yeah. there's a sort of how hard how hard you hit or how far you turn the dial. And I think there's probably an argument that you know, but because the film is about systems of abuse and a manipulation that for the audience to be manipulated just seems part of the course for this movie right, as well. Yeah, but, sure. I, but the idea that yeah. people were, were perhaps angered because yeah. the, 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 if you like, the, the packaging of the film looks like it's a film about this girl. Well, and funnily then, enough, I mean, and it we kind of isn't. We discussed this. It, with, it, yeah, it kind of, didn't we? Yes, we actually. This very yes, thing. Yes. We discussed this very yeah. thing where people don't like this notion that they're being lied to by their media in some way. Yeah. Although, manipulated over much by their media mm. when it defeats expectation or their own assumptions of what that media is going to be. And again, yeah. this, maybe this goes back to your previous question, Elliot, about why certain yeah, I think know, it vocal does. subsections of the horror community yeah. have reacted against I this. I think we've discovered of... the answer now. <laughs> maybe that is the case. Maybe that's yeah. it. Maybe because it is, it, it's, it's, um, well, yeah, I, you media can, you trains can make people a... to expect certain things. And then when it, when a piece of media comes along and doesn't deliver on them, people can feel... <laughs> Ex- yeah. extraordinarily yes. uh, aggressed upon yeah. right. I've you know, seen it didn't... that a couple of times recently there's yeah. the, the film Skinamarink people really I mean it's 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 absolutely a marmite that film it's it's it, it's antipodean you either love it or you really hate it and I mean really hate it and a lot of people hate it oh my god a lot of people hate it I mean a classic example yeah. of, of, of something that w- you know became renowned for causing furore because it it, it it he tried to short circuit the the very thing that was people were complaining about of um, no, where you going? Oh, you, you're going you're using a schematic you're using a schematic well I'm not going to use a schematic and it's the, the the second Star Wars film of the new 
sequels. Ah, sequels. The Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. Last yeah. Jedi, yeah. which of course was, yeah. which then led to the abomination of the of of, of the concluding chapter, oh, uh, uh, yeah. because there was so much compromise over it and yeah. so much fear yeah. of the power of that fandom. Um, As a, a non-Star but, Wars fan, I actually kind of quite like the Last Jedi. It's the first yeah. film in the entire series that's actually but said, you know what? maybe it's time to grow up a little bit. You but know? ironically, it didn't. It wasn't that radical. No, what? It is <laughs> no. <laughs> crazy. It very it, gently it, suggested, gently maybe, subverted a few things. Yeah, that actually you could, time you could to grow up. Trace in earlier movies as being already there in embryo. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't doing anything, you know, tremendously no. uh, subversive. It was just it really wasn't just like, basically just pulling like, out a few much, threads, <laughs> a couple of threads. And too yet, too fascinating Marvel's about that is. None of the people that hated it really knew why they hated it. They no. they had all sorts of theories, you know, like Iago trying to work out why he's doing what he's doing to a fellow in Desdemona. They, yeah, they yeah. tried to work out why they didn't like it, and they came out with loads and loads of different reasons and theories about why they didn't like it. But none of them actually knew because we're mm -hmm. talking to people that we're talking about people that don't have critical faculties. So right, they're grabbing right. hold of the, sort of the crazy thing was that, that it was like the, the narrative, the, the, uh, that, the fetishization of Luke Skywalker. Hmm. And yet, they had seen that very behaviour mm -hmm. with the similarly fetishised Obi Wan Kenobi in the very first, which is not the first film, but the film from seventy seven, yeah. basically, which yeah, is yeah, someone yeah. who went into hiding, turned his back on him. It's exactly the same behaviour with Yoda. It's just yeah. what the Jedi yeah, do. Get, this is it's what, what they, the do. they do. They get they I'm get not... cynical and depressed, right. and they run I'm off to some remote that. planet, and they. I mean. Luke has never been as interesting did. as he was when he became a hermit. I mean, then he was actually interesting. You know, then well, he actually the irony of, of course, was if you go back to those original films, he was kind of um, ridiculed well, by the same fan base then because they much preferred Han Solo. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like, where's all this come from? But it's like Jack said, it, there's no real logic to it. No, it's just, it's the just vibes. It's the film it's did not the go in the, in the, in the way i suspected it to go which was that you know she was going to turn up the lightsaber he was going to take the lightsaber he was going to let him go yes i i will come then he was going to meet up with han solo and princess Le all these things that were meant to happen in a fan's head didn't happen they told a different right. a slightly different story not even a radically different no. story a slightly a... different story and yet wow yeah yeah, yeah, the reaction was extreme. And I mean, even from the filmmakers, obviously, you got that abomination of a third film. I mean, an absolute and utter abomination. Well, it makes no sense. sense. It's not about the fact that Han didn't meet Luke again. You know, you didn't get the, the three people from the original trilogy having a meetup. It, th that's not what the problem is. The no. problem isn't even that The Last Jedi says, no, actually, um, Kylo Ren isn't redeemable. He's just a shit. It isn't <laughs> even that The Last Jedi says, Ren, uh, Rey isn't anybody. She's just a nobody. Yeah. She, yeah. She, she has no significance Crazy. except that she's good at what she does. It isn't any of those things. The problem was that it dared to, in a very mild and polite very. and half-hearted way, it dared to say the morality that you unthinkingly accepted in, in your childhood yeah. might actually not be very yeah. good. It, yeah. it might yes. be a bad take. Simply that was the that. problem. Simply this that. film. There might this be a more complex in, world out there that you might have to think about no 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 it might be time to grow up a little bit but there is no! nothing, there is nothing worse than challenging grown-ups who have fetishized something from their childhood about what that thing in their childhood might have said yeah, either uh, right. wittingly or unwittingly <laughs> absolutely um, you know there's a, a film doing the rounds at the moment called Saltburn, and it, you know, oh, yeah. whether people enjoy it or not is up to them. But there is this thing; it it has this quality of being a sort of like neo gothic film. So it has qualities where you think, oh, it's going to be a vampire film. It's going to have vampires in it, and it doesn't literally have vampires in it, but it has all the tropes of right. having vampires in it, and people have reacted against that for similar reasons. <laughs> uh, for me, when I watched it, what I got was, oh, it's Gormenghast. Ah, it's Gormenghast, well. but really queer and horny and awesome. That you know, I, cool, really enjoyed it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Uh, but people are reacting against it because it it has qualities of a gothic 
story, but it doesn't follow all of the traditions or patterns of a gothic story. And it's a similar thing. It's a similar thing. Oh, it's not this that I expected it to be. And people are reacting against it on that basis. The the post-neoliberal culture industries, um, they treat culture like the menu at uh, Burger King. You know, Uh, and uh, you you, you order a, a double Whopper and you get it back to your table and it hasn't got one of the ingredients in it, you know, that hasn't got the second layer of processed cheese or whatever. You say, well, this isn't right. Yeah. Uh, you take it back, don't you? That's how people treat media texts now. Yeah. I bought uh, a, a, a particular type of genre of thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's said on Netflix, thoughtful, strange, mm-hmm. spooky. Why is mm-hmm. why isn't it what I wanted it? Why isn't what I was told to be? It's and not what it, it says on it, the menu. I want my money back. Fulfilling prophecy mm-hmm. because now we've got things yeah. that, 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 that bleed through the pause, like Hereditary, like Midsummer, like to a very minor extent, because I think it was really exaggerated to the, the extent okay. where, what the what, what the, the, the last yeah. Jedi was doing. But they they are going to be just completely blotted out. Yeah, that that you know, not not in and of themselves, yeah. but further examples of of things mm-hmm. like that will do that kind of thing because it's it's going to be that well, this thing doesn't do that thing anymore. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's even something that you know. Um, Rise of Skywalker is proof of that, isn't it? Because the yeah, the yeah. level of negative reaction and the terror that the fan, quote unquote, fan reaction yeah. put into the hearts of Disney because they were worried about queering their, their built in market. So, they create they had to create a third film that wasn't just different. It had to be a direct repudiation of the last yeah. film. It, it couldn't just be different from The Last Jedi. It had to sort of fo- go down a checklist and, and yeah. all the things The Last Jedi didn't say, no, that was wrong. That was wrong. Scrub that. That didn't happen. It had to be erased. Yeah. And in doing so, completely obliterated the thesis that had been built up around those films, around like from the from The Force Awakens, which is this this whole notion of like the liberation of the Force, of Ray from nowhere. Suddenly, oh no, she's got to be like the granddaughter of Palpatine or something bullshit like still, that. Or, I'm still quite bitter about that because I quite liked The Force Awakens. I think The Force Awakens is a cleverer film than people give it credit yes. for, actually. And it set I, up characters that I, I really liked the core cast of characters. I thought they were really nice. And then Last Jedi comes along. I couldn't go along with some of the extravagant praise of it that it were coming mm-hmm. from some people sort of in my general quarter. But I did yeah. like it. I thought it was quite good. Just yeah. between them, we'd had Rogue One, which I thought was brilliant but my favorite star wars film of any kind and then Mm -hmm. that that you know i still care about these characters i still care about ray particularly and also um kylo ren uh, Mm -hmm. care about him in the negative sense and then you get that last movie and it was it it, it was bullshit i I, i'm still i'm still a bit sore about that because they actually made me care and then they said now fuck off but they did that very strange thing in the third film of, of not just doing a direct repudiation they would go they would basically try and offer two um angles per scene yeah. like, well this happened and it didn't itself. happen yeah oh, well oh my uh, god uh, this this sacrifice was made oh no it's been reversed and uh, yeah. I, I mean the vacillating scene per scene, per scene. you know what wow. the, audience, the audience should not be dictating what storytellers tell them if they Absolutely do what they need not. then they would be the storytellers Absolutely. they're not yeah. they're the audience no. you know and, and, and i'm yeah. sorry is not crowdsourced that's... Right. That is, I mean, that is a power. The only dictatorship that is allowed is the artistic dictatorship. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. The only one that we we, we're we're giving you. (laughs) Storytelling is a tyranny of one, and that's it. You know, it needs to be a tyranny a lot of the time. Uh, Democracy comes in in the uh, consumption phase, the production phase. It's a dictatorship. Exactly that, and it has to be. It has to be to work. Well. I mean, not really in, in cinema, obviously, because, you know, oh, cinema is immensely yeah. collaborative. You know. thing, yeah. but all, all the caveats, be, all the caveats, all the caveats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there needs to be a coherent vision, though, right? There needs yes. to be some yes. sort of coherent vision. Uh, and yes. it needs to be it consistent. It has to be more than piles of money. And, and chopped and changed and edited and, you know, re-edited and then re-watched by test audiences and then re-chopped and re-changed. Because what you get is 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 the rise of skywalker which is yeah fucking vapid and awful and has some you know it it has that infamous line of course somehow palpatine returned (laughs) it's like oh 
I don't I don't care how many millions he was paid. I do feel sorry for Oscar Isaacs having to deliver that line with a straight face. Yeah, me too. He deserved every penny. Incredibly, you know, because these things work against their own uh, logic. There, there was something just it's so incredibly painful about the fact that um, I'm, I'm terrible on names. Is 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 Finn the storm tro- the, the the stormtrooper who that's right yeah. rejects yeah. 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 and put um, po- the the fact that they don't embrace and kiss it's harder to watch than if they did well actually I've been okay with yeah. that but you know uh, from a certain because it it's so pointed in that well yeah. there really should be some clinch now boys there should be some because the whole narrative of your story is built up towards the fact that you're clearly in love with each other yeah. and then they just stay like three What's feet that? apart from each other and it's like How's... this is more painful um than yeah. surely for the most you know homophobic viewer out there could have like dealt with 10 seconds of it because this is worse <laughs> e- even the i dare the most homophobic person to go actually no that was fine because it, it's just you know it shouldn't be there it shouldn't yeah. unfold like that so it becomes awkward to watch you're mm-hmm. watching something supremely awkward because it just goes against the grain of the entire yeah. narrative built up and across it's, it's round about the same time that um uh can't remember, can't remember her name. Sorry, I beg your pardon. All, all, the, all the pardons in the world. But the, the, the writers of um, the, the new She-Ra, they just said, yeah, um, they're in love with each other. Yeah, yeah. they just went for it. I love Adora it. and oh, Catra are in love with each other. Yeah. Such a oh, great it's show. so brilliant. It's so brilliant. I mean, you, you had cart- like cartoons doing a similar thing around that time. Adventure Time did exactly the same. They'd been sort of like, playing with the idea that two of their main characters were were in a relationship and about, around the same era last few last episode yeah it just went for it just completely yeah. went for it made subtext text and it's like yes yes wonderful yeah indy yeah, stevenson is the name of the of the showrunner i was thinking of. that's right yeah Ooh, i apologize if i uh, just misgendered them but um yeah. It's a stunner. Yeah. I mean, I haven't rewatched it for a long time. Actually, I should go back to. Well, I was des- no, I desperately yeah. upset because I picked up. I, I was recommended it by Jack and our, mm-hmm. our friend Christine, and I was like, "Well, that's two very, very reliable recommendations." <laughs> and Vicky and I fell in love with it. We just absolutely. Adore. But I got the, 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 I got the thing on physical media first three mm-hmm. seasons and they didn't release the second they didn't release it all no so it yeah, was they like still haven't been released they did uh, no and this is again i was saying to george earlier is one of the reasons why i i i rip and duplicate um everything all my I physical media it. onto external hard drives because i just think once those dvds go and through scratch and wear and tear and and so on uh, these things are not being reissued not in the era of streaming in the way that they were. And DreamWorks, it is, it is, is it DreamWorks? Um, yeah, I think they just basically said, oh, well, yeah, we'll stream seasons four and five of Shiro, which I have seen, uh, but we're not, going to, we're not going to put them out on DVD. And I said, oh, oh I can never have doing? My, my own physical copy of it. No! Yeah. I, want, That's a shame. I, I mean, want you know what? I complete I, Shira and the Princesses of Power Blu ray box there. What are you That's talking exactly about? I want, what fetish, I, want. I want to fetishize yeah. that commodity. And they know it's me. terrible, isn't it? Because we, 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 for all our critiques of um, commodity you know, fetishism, and yet. I mean, I, I am, I am, I am from a certain era, and I want my, I want my media physical. <laughs> I know, I know, and I want, I want, you know, I, we've been spoiled a little bit, haven't we? Because yeah. we want the sort of Lord of the Rings style box sets, don't we? Let's yeah. be honest, we want the hundred yeah, you... hours extra material. Absolutely, but yeah, I'm, um, I'm just yeah, very the, upset by the that. passing of <laughs> the passing of VHS. So much is just being lost. It's just, yeah. it's just disappearing. Yeah, and there I'm is so much on VHS that is not being recorded or transferred or kept. You know, the VHS tapes are gradually being physically junked, and when they go, there's 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 untold amounts of stuff that's just yeah. lost to culture Absolutely. forever. I mean, don't get me wrong, and it's happening again be... now. It's happening yes. again now with DVDs and Blu-rays. It's happening yeah. again. It is. It's happening again. I mean, a lot has been preserved on the internet, but. Um, there's sure, stuff. There's still stuff that's been lost. I mean, I'm I'm fascinated. About all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? And of I, course, I, you were on the, the the whims of someone else, uh, exactly. whether they stream it. Exactly that. 
Exactly. Uh, and, and when they pull it, and if they give you any warning, they're going to pull it. I know there was something recently because they were uh, cost saving. Was it Paramount? Possibly Paramount. <laughs> they just pulled a load of programs. Yeah. You know, and it was like, oh well, we're like on season two of seven. Well, sorry. Yeah. We, we, we're not. It's the new. It's the new form of the commodity in the digital era. The commodity is being turned into a service. It's being turned into yes. access to information yes. rather than an actual thing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it just well, yeah rankles on that about note. Shira. <laughs> oh, it, does. No, it does. It does. Rank. It rankles about a lot of things. I mean, why has there never been a nightmare DVD set? Why has that yeah. never happened? I mean, I because I, yeah. when when it, DVD first kicked off, it's weird. There's a prejudice, it was isn't there? Because it's amazing. Not, it's not what narrative was fiction. It was really. Right. I mean, oh yeah. These things got one, maybe one issue, and sometimes <laughs> it was, it was little better than viewing a VHS copy. But, but it was the fact that the discs themselves are so much cheaper than than yeah. yards and yards of tape, and <laughs> so you, if you go back to sort of the year two thousand, there was a glut of really obscure, strange, previously yeah. unreleased stuff. But it only got yeah. its one issue. You had to get it then. Yep. Uh, as it was, uh, you know, that, that was it. That's when the BFI did Ghostwatch, isn't it? That really brilliant Ghostwatch DVD. And it had been lost up until that point. Yeah. Up until and that ironically, point. Uh, my Ghostwatch, yeah. copy of Ghostwatch, is on a double-banked DVD with uh, the stone tape. Isn't that strange? Oh, brilliant. That's yeah. brilliant. It, they it? were released as a... I thought, my God, it's like they anticipated that's us. perfect. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Oh, they anticipated the this podcast. Oh, wow. It's every bit as good as it was yeah. last time. Oh, it's so good. Don't know. I mean, uh, and, and, and as much as I adored Hereditary and Hereditary disturbed me, there is still to this day nothing that has disturbed me <laughs> as much as the stone tape in terms of um, uh, uh, visual video fiction. fiction. Yeah, yeah, visual mm-hmm. fiction. It, yeah. It's, the, it's the three o'clock wake up. It, again, it's implication. It's uh, um, a suggestion and, and, and w- where you take the information you're given. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's been plenty of uh, print fiction that's done that, you know, obviously because the, what you can conjure with that is, you know, is, is, yeah. is, is, is immense. But um, yeah, the the stone t- for, for all the horror I've seen, you know, this 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 low budget television series, it's that that's the one that when I see it, I know there's going to be possibly the three o'clock wake up and go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys. After Hereditary, I'm I'm going to go and watch something really lightweight. I, I want to go and watch something really popcorny and maybe something like them or Pink oh, wow. or something like that. I suppose we have to get back to Hannibal, don't we? We do have to get back to Hannibal. We definitely. have an appointment with Dr. Lecter. <laughs> we do. We do. We're missing our appointments, haven't we? Yes, we have. Absolutely. We've been very rude. Oh, oh well, we're finished. <laughs> in that instance, we're, yeah, we may be in trouble. Uh, it's um, uh, it's Jack Cakes and George Pate for uh, for some of them. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so yes, I think um, th- this is Spooktober is finally over. I think so. And, and, um, my God, I mean, we backloaded that one, didn't we? Bloody hell, we did, Rob. Yeah. Wow. Woof. But it's back <laughs> to Baltimore. Back it's to back Baltimore. to Baltimore. It is. Yeah. It is. Oh my! I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to no, it, guys. I'm really looking forward to getting back to Hannibal. I really am. Yeah, yeah, I've enjoyed too, all these. But, it's been yeah. a nice hiatus, yeah. and now it's like, yeah, really yeah, ready to, really be, ready for yeah, that yeah. again. And it's funny because we're getting back into it at the turning point of the series. The next episode is the one where it basically says, "You know what? Kind of Serial that. killer, <laughs> we done. done. It's over with this episode. It cool. stopped pretending to be CSI yeah. Baltimore." Yeah. <laughs> and it makes a it superior CSI. Yeah. yeah, it makes it totally <laughs> explicit in the next episode. Oh, really? Well, thank you okay. guys. That was fabulous. Is there any, before great. we go, pimp out? Um, Shall I get mine over with? Yeah, or, yeah go ahead. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm on Blue Sky. Blue Sky at Times Carcass at uh, Blue Sky dot social. I think that's it. I'm still getting the hang of the. Um, it's yeah, it, the blue just look. For, just look for Jack Graham, Times Carcass. I'm on Blue Sky. Um, Thanks, and I have a Patreon where you will get, uh, for a dollar a month, you will get advance access to everything that I do uh, as long as I do it uh, in time to give you advance access. I'm writing again. I've just recently posted. Um, I was asked, because I do, um, I usually do essays now for ATB Publishing's 
essay anthologies about various sci-fi um series when they when they're doing another one i usually get the old email i um, mean several of the previous ones and they asked me to do an essay on deep space nine an episode of deep space nine for their forthcoming uh deep space nine essay compilation and so i'm very lucky to get in quick and i nabbed the episode duet the famous episode duet from series one and i've just sent my essay on that to the uh, editors of that and i put it up exclusively plus load at least as much again in terms of word count in off cuts uh, exclusively for my patreon supporters and uh, you also get advanced access to things like this for instance you will my patreon supporters will get this a week before mm -hmm. george puts it up or roughly a week before george puts it up on the internet and the big news is Oh yeah, no. There's um, there's the um, degrowth book as well. Celine Keller has released her new graphic novel, "Who's Afraid of Degrowth," which is a non-fiction graphic novel where she goes through the the topic of degrowth theory, sorting out uh, misinformation and myths from from the reality of the theory. And I'm in there as a contributor and as a cartoon character myself. I'm I'm in there fully oh, drawn goodness. in in cartoon form, um, uh, giving my opinions in speech bubbles about Caleb Mulpin and his theories on degrowth and uh, Dugin and Lyndon Larouche and all that sort of thing. So yeah, check that out. That is that is a brilliant project. You can download the PDF Fantastic. for free from Celine's uh, website, but you can also support her uh, crowdfunding. Um, uh, thing for it and get the uh the paperback as well and all those links are at my blue sky and da -da 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 -da. but the big news the really big news is that i don't speak german is back daniel and i yes. are recording again we did a new patreon exclusive bonus episode which again is up at my patreon uh exclusively for supporters and we're very soon going to be recording a new mainline public episode which well i won't tell you what that's about uh but it'd be a big surprise <laughs> and uh more bonuses again at the patreon so that's me cool fantastic jack could you send me the links to the graphic novel and i'll put i'll put mm -hmm. all of those in the the bar down below will do fantastic elliot um yes I, also on blue sky i can't say i'm the, the, the most prodigious poster but um you can find me on there on uh, elliot chapman uh uh b sky social but m the uh, the l's for elliot are actually the number one instead so it's e it to makes you one, easier to find you know it's really useful it really does make you easier to find oh, well, if you type good. in elliot you're going to get all the elliots yeah, on Blue all, all the elliots and the irony of it is it's not even my first name it's my middle name oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh yes i mean uh, if, if anyone is, is is not thoroughly bored with my voice already i've just uh, i think imminently uh, due out is um uh, my, completing the third of ken mcleod's ambitious audacious um science fiction trilogy about uh, faster than light travel and this one's called beyond the light horizon i think that's due out imminently this is absolute epic so you'd have me in your ears for hours you poor people if you choose <laughs> that and I've, uh, another rather interesting one coming up non-fiction which is um somewhat germane to uh, what we've been talking about and it's uh a Candida, a Candida Moss book called Ghost Writers, Enslaved Christians and the Making of the Bible, which really looks at the, the history of the of the workers who contributed um, to the texts rather than um, the people who've taken all the glory, as per. <laughs> um, so those are my current two um, audio projects as reader. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff I've produced as well, but, you know. Um, but yes, so that's me. <laughs> once again if there are any uh, links to these projects send them on over and i'll put them down below oh, bless you. Well. thank you um as for myself i've also got an essay coming out uh not for a good long while but it's going to be in an anthology of essays about mario barber hey. uh, i was actually paid Ooh. which is lovely to uh write a piece on mario barber's planet of the vampires which was enormous fun which it i dug out fun. of um uh my archive uh, oh. purely because i knew you did and i rewatched oh. it and uh, loved it. Oh, i had great fun of great it. fun. i mean it's been a while it's been a long time since i mm. but i watched obviously rewatched it for the purposes of this essay so that will i will uh put links up as and when that anthology is out but that's not going to be for a little while yet um you can find me knocking about on exaggerated elegy where again there are let's plays there are more discussions like this have lots of discussions like this happening just had uh my second prolonged chat on alien 3 jack which was with my friend gerard so uh that will be up 
relatively soon. Um, Look forward to listening to that. Yeah. yeah, that should be fun. That should be fun. Uh, uh, if you go over to Arrow Films, of course, I will. I will not stop going on about this. You will find uh, myself and my colleague <laughs> Kit Power on the uh, the new Hellbound Blu-ray and UHD uh, on the Quartet of Torment set. And we are mm. in a featurette uh, called "What the uh, Hell Is What They Wanted," and uh, we talk about Hellbound for about an hour and forty-eight minutes, I believe. Mm. And it was great fun. It was amazing. Uh, published work you can find links to over at strangeplaygrounds.com. And if you go to the Evil Empire of Amazon and type in George Daniel Lee, you'll find all of the short story collections and anthologies and things that have been published in. It was published in who? short story collections a uh, late last year a, a collection from uh, kevin j kennedy productions of sort of monster and kaiju horror stories and another one of science fiction horror stories so again links to those over i'll put them below actually i'll put links to those below but if you go and type into amazon you'll find my name you'll find them you'll find them knocking about and i'm also on blue sky i am i am still knocking about on twitter for promotional purposes but that's going to end very very soon because it's a cesspool and it needs to die. Um, <laughs> beyond that, uh, thank you guys. That, oh, that was brilliant. And thank you guys at home for listening. Until next time, bye-bye. Many thanks. Bye-bye.